live. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the next episode of Star Trek Adventures Cerberus Station. Sorry about the delay. This, but, uh, uh, bleh. I've already lost my train of thought, so we're just going to take it to the captain's log. Uh, the captain, eh, this story was scheduled, was planned for the captain's absence. Captain's player actually showed up, but we're still having the commander in charge because why not? So, commander log, please take it away. First officer's personal log, start a 83182.3. I've been in command of the station for the last few days as Captain Crawford has been away uh, meeting with the Vitars Imperium. He is attempting to smooth relations with them after we boldly defended the Interlink and granted them asylum within the Nebula. Many of the governments in the region in this space still, still see the Interlink as Borg and hostile. In other news, the USS Perseus is nearing its completed repairs after our battle with the Remnant forces. The blasts uh, they took knocked out their drive systems, venting plasma, and, fry and fried their entire EPS system, as well as about a half a dozen other systems on their ship. C the combined engineering teams of the Perseus and Cerberus station have been working to repair her, but it has taken quite a bit of time. Meanwhile, I have been uh, getting to know Captain Correa. He is a fascinating researcher and captain. Apatu and him have been comparing notes on the effects of volcanism on the plant life. It isn't quite an interesting time at the dinner table. The Interlink's representative, Verity, has recently approached us for some assistance in bringing some of the Interlink's members to their new home. She has requested that the Federation assist in negotiating safe passage of her people through the Remnant space. I don't know how easy this will be as we just decisively kick their butts, but nevertheless, we will attempt to do our part. Um, our best tactic uh, may be to approach it of we are taking, the, uh, taking care of a, pro a problem for them. I hope this attempt works. Either way, it is my turn to take the Lunette out for a spin. Unfortunately, that leaves Commander uh, JL in charge of, the sp of station operations for the time being. The man is a dedicated officer, almost too dedicated. He does his best, uh, but he tries to change everything all at once, expecting everyone to fall in line. The man has absolutely no willingness to listen to others' feedback and input. I enjoy getting away for a few days, but... Uh, to do some good in the galaxy. However, the mountains of a complaint pads that arrive on my desk after he is in command make the getaway almost not worth it. I wonder if Captain Correa or Captain Hamasi would be with mind taking the reins of the station while I'm away. End log. A thorough summation of uh, current events there, Commander. Uh, so, before you guys jump through the Transwarp hub on your mission of asylum, or mere mission of escort. Is there anything you guys would like to do on the station with each other? I'm not hearing anyone volunteering, so... Um, I'm going to be on the Apollo doing stuff. Okay. Uh, trying stuff with Kivon, if I remember correctly, from last time we spoke. Ah. Definitely. Okay, quick scene on the Apollo with Kivon. Sure. You guys start off, I will get the set pieces and stuff all ready to go. I imagine that Demos is in the engineering part there. He's wearing like full on overalls, like uh, much like the old Enterprise days. And he's just working on something underneath. And he's like, Kivon, I, look, I don't think we can reroute that much power into your little device. I don't know. You know, it seems like it's going to be a sound plan to me. I mean, it actually isn't pulling that much from both warp cores. I mean, it, the worst that could happen is just a power inversion, but I don't foresee that happening. Well, that's the thing, though. This is two warp cores going to be connected together. There's no relay, there's no buffer. If we get an overload, that's going to feed back into the cores. Yeah, that that's, that's a possibility. Yep. Then, I... So, yeah, I, we should figure that out first before we attempt any larger and more durable testing. Yeah, yeah, that might be an idea. Uh, you know, I'll I'll go. You know, I'll spend some more time with engineering and my you know my little 
part of the shop and fiddle around with a few things. However, I definitely still want to try to see if we can... What was the last warp speed we were able to get the, the Apollo up? Oh, well, without uh, inertial dampeners and uh, staying in a straight line at least, 9.9. 9. But I want to get that higher. Yeah, I'd say, well... Okay, let's try to put the inertial dampers at, back in and at least get it to 9.9. .9. I don't know about you, but I prefer to keep my intestines in the same spot. Well, the goal of this ship is to drop out, hard turn, go on. Inertial dampers aren't going to compensate that quickly. For you, yeah, that's going to spell trouble. For me, nothing. Yeah, you might want to install. We might want to install some seat belts. Yeah. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. I think we could get some old designs from the Enterprise, the original, the, or at least some some version of the Enterprise. I think they had used that at one point. They they always seem to jar themselves a little. Yeah, you can just use the old harness styles and um, race cars. You know, four point connection. I think they're five point, but that that works too. Um, probably not a bad idea. So, do you want to head down, head down to engineering and try to see if we can time out these uh, warp cores a little fast? Uh, sure. One second, though. Computer, what's the current time? The time is cur the current time is seventeen hundred forty-nine. Yeah, if you scratch that, uh, chief, I gotta get on my uh, beta shift. Gotcha. Yeah, I actually get a night off, so. I don't know. I think I got something. I'm gonna work. Something else. I'm gonna work on, but not the, this project. But you know, we'll we'll reconvene when when next we, our shifts can, you know, free time can work. Hey, you know what? I got a few days coming up that I can take off. I'll uh, put in a request for a couple of days, just to uh, relax. And by relax, work on the Apollo. <laughs> we all have our ways, man. We all have our ways. Okay. And on that note, the uh, uh, your comm badges beep uh, simultaneously with uh, Commander uh, Dalrum asking you all to join him on the lunette. Oh, no way, Commander. So we are going to cut to the bridge of the USS Lunette, where a bunch of familiar faces are gathered. And two slightly unfamiliar faces, although becoming more and more commonly seen around these areas, standing us a respectful distance away from all electronics, are the interlinks faces, uh, Verity and Rusik. And they, uh, ah, they defer to Commander Dalrum and are. They're doing their best to stay out of the way, but given the cramped nature of the bridge, very difficult to do. Hello, Rusik. Hello, Verity. Greetings. Deckard still giving you trouble? Whoever decided to give him my personal uh, communication frequency needs to be shot out of an airlock. Oh. I'll 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 make sure he tries to lose it. Appreciated. And if it needs to be removed, uh, I can help with that. Are you? Uh, uh, what are you? What are you speaking of removing? Um, I'm just saying I could assist in helping Deckard lose the frequency. However, however Starfleet chooses to deal with this is acceptable. I'll, I'll talk with them. Verity just takes a step forward, leans over the uh, support the support rail of the um, auxiliary tactical console behind Commander Dolrum. It groans a little bit as it's not used to dealing with roughly 300 pounds of condensed uh, Borg alloy. Commander Dalrum, once again, we uh, extend our gratitude for whatever assistance you are able to provide. 
Well, don't thank me yet. We haven't accomplished anything. This could be a little interesting. That is true. Um, I think we are heading out through gate 14, I believe, by your coordination, or by your coordinate scheme. The, in the We are currently expecting one cube and three spheres, roughly... Uh, five light, roughly five light years. Oh, now let's see, light years. Nope. Uh, roughly twenty light years away from the gate's primary, or from the gate's aperture. There is a. They are attempting to enter their space, but ha, are being blocked. Uh, are being blockaded by one of the remnant species. All right. Let's see what we can do, Lieutenant. Lay in a course. Through the gate. Uh, ELH had to quickly go AFK, so I, sir, setting a course. And with that, you. Just as you're about to enter the. Uh, ah, enter the aperture of the gateway, uh, you receive a communication from the station. This is the lunette. This is Acting Captain Bernie Jail here, wishing you safe travels and safe passages, and the station will be far more efficient upon your return. Bernie, don't change anything while we are away. That's an order. Yes, sir. Not changing anything. Absolutely. I will, however, be sure to document all of my recommendations. I will try to keep it under 150 pads. I do appreciate it. Keep her on one piece. We'll be back shortly. Hopefully with um, some more friends to welcome. Aye, sir. And with that, in close communications and is on their way. As soon as comms look closed, closed, I do a big old sigh. <sighs> he knows that a pad can hold more than one page, correct? Honestly, I don't know with that one. Is it Demos? would it be wrong of me to say that I hate him? Yes, you should never hate a superior officer. Yeah. Well, I make an exception for this one, and Nia just turns back around to his console. You, we really shouldn't hate any one. However, quite frankly, he. I've seen some people that like to really be the center of attention. He is a star within him. Boy. That's putting it, like... you know, when he retires, he'd be really good on the Federation News Network as the nightly anchor. <laughs> to be fair, he's passed all his testing and his qualifications to become a commander rank. So he has clearly demonstrated growth and potential. That's true. Maybe we should find a way to nurture that. Instead of just... Uh, train them like how we're training them. I, I try. When we get more support vessels, he might be able to do something with the Lunette or another support vessel for more of like the local trade and communications with uh, the local space. But as we are still kind of new in the area... Beta shift commander is really all we have right at the moment. Well, how about uh, we pair him up with the captain? You know, as um, as a learning experience. Some somewhere in another part of the Laysai expanse, you just hear Crawford scream. <laughs> no, Craw say, um, no, Craw no, Crawford's ears just inexplicably start bleeding. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander, um, I'll take that into consideration, but. I enjoy being the commander of the station. I don't need to be the one in charge because the previous one decided to do something unthinkable. Which could very well happen with that man. I still think that's a little harsh, but I, sir. Uh, I love it. And as the... As... Just as the conversation ends, Lieutenant Dusk announces that they are you are entering the portal and setting coordinates to the 
um, ah, to the designated exit point. Where once the trips through these uh, gateways were rather rough, thanks to a uh, few months of travel through them, you guys have developed enough inertial dampening protocols and uh, sensor ah, and the deflector dish modifications to make the trick or make the trip quite smoothly. And you exit yourself out here. The gateway uh, comes to uh, the gateway ends in a fairly dense uh, cluster of stars. Um, many of them are uh, fairly new stars, but there's uh, re ah, there is rem there is enough evidence of recent, well, galaxy epoch standard recent uh, supernovas and aging stars among them. Looks like that this stellar cluster is in the process of renewing itself. Several small or several several nebulae of various gases and colors can be seen um, in the near distance, and actually one of them is relatively close to the gate. Uh, there are also three ships acting in a blockade formation, and as soon as you exit the gate, uh, they begin to approach. Uh, Demos, you reckon. Your tactical display shows that their shields are up and their weapons are armed. Commander, I'd recommend going to yellow alert. Their weapons and shields are up. Bring the shields up. Tactical yellow alert. Try hailing them. Aye. Yeah, yeah. Raise shields and uh, send out and hail. Uh, these, the smaller ship in the center one, the one that lo sort of looks like a banana with a... Uh, cir uh, with a circle of tape attached to the back of it is the one that answers. So a tape dispenser? Y yes, absolutely. Uh, this uh, sp Your view screen comes alive with a species who has a smallish, smallish head that is missing all forms of facial hair, uh, large black eyes along the... Uh, around the middle of this head... Where there would be a nose, there isn't one. It appears to have probably been a, maybe a fish or fish descendant at some point. And the most striking feature is its extremely long neck. Uh, it's, it speaks to you in a method that your universal translator doesn't quite understand. Um, instead of it translating it into Federation Common... Instead, it sounds more like a series of clicks, uh, warbles, bleeps, and the occasional singing note. First contact with a new species. The Universal Translator hasn't caught up. This is new. Let's see if I can get him talking some more. Mm -hmm. Greetings! My name is Commander Dolrum of the USS Lynette and Deep Space 15. Cocks its head to one side, sort of, and it, it bends down, or it bends the neck down, so that the neck almost bends a full, um, almost full in half, really. Oh. As it seems to be working on a console, um, out of your current vision. Um, it seems to it. It's attempting to overlay your. Uh, speech pa or its speech patterns with other languages as if it is attempting a universal translator of its own. Um, and if the USS Lunette, uh, let's see. So if Mr. Dalrum or whoever wants to work the communication system could roll me a, uh, let's do a reason plus science, and the ship can assist with computers plus science. And this is going to be a difficulty of two to get these ships systems to talk to one another it will not be me i would be only be shooting for a 10 <laughs> uh i think our best bet for that's probably keevan yep i'm rocking a 14 with recent science so i'll take the sh i'll take the lead all right keep in mind uh, if you guys want other support characters on the lunette just make a note of them yep. and you said for the task for the lunette was comms and science uh yes communications and science I probably okay. said computers at the first point, but yes, communications yeah. and science. 
That's one well, from Keith. Come on, ship. You can do it. I did the stuff with... Oh, there hey, we yes. go. <laughs> yeah. You did it. Indeed you did. Congratulations. Okay. The It takes a few minutes of back and forth as uh, Keevan, you uh, finagle the uh, ship's communication systems to attempt to interface with the others. Um, there is a significant amount of... Um, yeah. Uh, counter electronic warfare going on in the background uh, whatever ships these are are being very defensive against any form of communication system intrusion but between you or between the lunette and these ships you're able to figure something out <clears throat> finally That's... the uh voice turns from a series of warbles and clicks to if this doesn't work we're going to have to shut everything down and just start shooting oh <laughs> well that's a greeting greetings i'm commander dolrum you you've you sort of catch him or your voice catches him off guard commander dolrum i am commander Le Commander Nishlal of the of the Elune. Are are you one of the uh, are you one of the protectors of the Borg? You could say that. I am the commanding current commanding officer of this vessel, the USS Lunette, as well as the first officer of the station Deep Space Fifteen. <clears throat> He takes a quick look at your um, bridge, ah, at uh, your bridge, taking note of every individual. Uh, his eyes settle on the two Borg in the background, and his head sort of does a. Uh, oh, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Does sort of a. Moves in a very quick circle, a wide circle as it. Ah. As his eyes begin to widen at the sight and then narrow. And then his neck, without the rest of his body moving, his neck bends straight forward almost 90 degrees so that it is looking right at you. Commander, I would... You are... Uh, you. This gate is attempting to, uh, to access remnant space. I advise that you turn around and return to the... Return, return to your space station and, and never darken our space again well that can certainly be arranged but i hear tell that you have a problem that we want to take care of that that problem is our business not yours and it definitely not theirs oh that's just it i'm part of the um government military body which took care of the borg Initially, the remaining individuals that uh, that you call the Borg are what we call the Interlink. They are freed drones that, um, due to their nature, were not dispo taken care of. We'll say taken care of at the time when the collective collapsed. Uh, his head of uh, so ah the neck sort of wobbles back and forth as his eyes uh, fully close as he seems to be pondering the proper response. From from one oh. military individual to another, Commander, I fully am aware of the role that we must take in protecting one's allies. However, what these individual, what these Borg, Interlink, whatever, pose, even if we allow them to cross our space, our populations would see that as a weakness in our governments. And, Or, you could simply see, them at, see it as another government taking care of a problem that you never then have to deal with again. 
everyone has felt the the wrath of the Borg. They attacked the Federation multiple times over the course of our history. My first command was downed. Well, I became in command because the ship was downed, and I took command of the survivors of that crash. We've all been affected by the Borg. But wanting to annihilate entire uh, an entire species, entire new species, doesn't bode well. I would like, to, as much as I wish I could apologize to you on behalf of our governments for our rash attack um, recently on your station and the interlink, that is not within my power to do so, otherwise I would offer it, because as I said, I am a military man, and as are you. But Indeed. that is that is for governments to decide, not individuals. Like, well, it just so happens I get to sp I can speak on behalf of the government of the Federation to a certain extent, seeing as I am the currently in charge of both this vessel, which is considered sovereign space of the Federation, but also the Federation starbase um, in which you attacked. I don't think, and well, we re we repelled pretty easily. I don't want to brag too much. It would not take much for my government to wage war. And the the uh, fleet that was there at the station, it's only a small, small portion of the power that we really have. Mm -hmm. And if we want to re uh, bring in our allies, who do usually follow us in, it would not take long for the remnant to fall. I don't want to see that. I don't think you want to see that. We're trying to rebuild our societies and grow out of the destruction of the past. I see no no reason why we can't take a, something, a problem off your hand. Therefore, it's not causing you any problem anymore. From one person of a military background to another. Uh, at this point, I believe an opposed... Uh... Let's do presence plus command test is an order here. And this will be, well, it's an opposed one. So uh, diplomacy, ne negotiation. Composure? I'll let composure work, yeah. Ooh, he rolled well. Yes, yes, he did. I'm going to burn my determination. Ooh, burning it early. Cool. What value are you t are you uh, hitting on? Could I possibly make an argument for I must defend my home since they did attack it? Yeah, that's a bit of a thread, but I'll let you pull it. I'll take it. I will also give you two threat for a third die. Ooh, more threat. Excellent. Wow. Wow. Six indeed. successes <laughs> and a complication. Okay, so that is three momentum. Okay. And a complication. And I know precisely what that complication is going to be, but I can't spring it on you right now because... Part of me wants to buy off the the complication. Part of me wants to see what happens. Hmm. Team, what do you think? Should I buy? It? Should we buy it off? No. No. Let's re let it roll. All right, we'll roll with it. Okay. Very well. So, uh, the complication will take pl will have to take place. Well, the triggering event will take place but you will only see the results of which. Okay. Very well. Without much of a warning, uh, the Elune communication shut themselves down, and the Lunette detects a series of encrypted communications heading back into the uh, super cluster of stars. I give the motion to 
uh, mute the cons, uh, the com. I just turn around. I think I might have sparked something. In a good or bad way, sir? I think the only answer to that uh, specialist is yes. And he'll actually turn and then point to where the uh, specialist thing would be. But now you see uh, a new symbol that represents a chief petty officer. See... You're supposed to tell me these things so I can address you properly. It's only, not like I don't see you for dinner every other night. I mean, I was in civilian dress and Keevan gave it to me, so I wasn't sure if he put it through you or not. I thought you knew. I'm sorry. Sorry, it's... Commander. I, I addressed that with the captain directly. I I should have brought it to your attention. And t I should have let you know. Uh, it's probably on one of the many pads stacked on my desk that it... Paperwork is not my strong suit. Well, my apologies for not bringing it up, Commander. No, nah, congrats for the promotion there. Well, thank you. But, uh, still, to answer your question, the only proper answer is yes. Is it good or bad? Yes. Oh. <laughs> it's called We Rolled the Dice and See What We Get. And on that note, the dice results are about to come up as the uh, ship hails you once again. On screen. Commander Dolrum, we have, after an emergency session of our Security Council, we have decided to uh, allow you through our space under escort to the confrontation. If you could please, Excellent. if you could please take a position around my ship and my and allow my drone ships to flank you, we will. Uh, and please do not please match our speed. Not a problem. What warp factor are we expecting to be able to go? If you could please uh, match our speed at warp seven, that would be very kind. Not a problem. We will fall in formation. Excellent. As soon as we cut comms, I also turn. Send a communication back through the uh, network hub to alert the station that we have made contact with the Remnant and we are falling into formation with them to you know, be aware of our status. Will do. So, uh, to the coordinates that they mention, uh, Remnant space appears to be fairly, well, vast in comparison to the other um, species that you've encountered so far within the Expanse. It'll take about two days at uh, Warp 7 to reach the other, the disputed portion of the border. Is there anything you guys wish to do in the meantime? Hmm. Um, at this point, not necessarily a scene, but yeah. for theatrics, Dolrum's going to say we're going to do a movie night in the mess hall. Uh, what movie, Commander? An old Earth classic, The Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> Which one, the uh, Marvel movie one, or the one that came out in the sixties? With, like, Sean Connery, I think it was. No, that oh, actually well, came out in the 80s. 80s, okay. The movie, the series was the 60s. Ah, right. We'll do we'll do the Marvel comic one. Fair enough. Obviously, we can't show that due to, you know, legal reasons, but <laughs> let's all just close our eyes and imagine the, our coolest scene from it, and we'll move on from there. <laughs> um, at this point, you, you guys have traveled with this particular group of ships long enough that I can tell you some of it. So, interestingly enough, the only ship that is emanating life signs is the banana tape dispenser style of ship. Uh, oh. The others that are flanking you have no life signs at all. Uh, there is a sig there is a significant amount of encrypted communications be uh, between the two of them, leading. 
There's only about uh, 25 life signs on it, on the center ship, being a scale 3. Uh, would surface scans reveal, along with that encryption, that we can safely assume that the other two ships are being remotely controlled, basically? That's an easy enough assumption to make, yes. Okay. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Can we also do kind of passive scans to get an idea of the... for astrometrics? Um, yeah, so you're just looking for, like, systems that you pass by, any notable yeah, phenomenon, system, etc. systems, notable phenomenon, maybe get a kind of a dial down exactly where we are, because I don't know that we established oh, exactly where I, in the quadrants we are. I'd forgotten to mention that. Uh, so where you guys are are in the Delta Quadrant, and your guys are fairly close to the Galactic Core. Dude. What is doubly interesting... Um, this might be easy, more picked up on uh, Dolrum's, or not Dolrum, Demos's side, is that this area of space looks like it was once where the Dread Empire called home before it fell eons ago. Ooh. Intriguing. Very. Um, you appear to be heading towards a particle fountain. It's Quite a dangerous piece of uh, science fiction, or not science fiction, a piece of, ah, it's a spatial anomaly that was attempted to be understood by the, uh, by the, ah, by USS Voyager, and apparently has been attempted to, been studied by several Starfleet scientists over the years. Not a lot of it has been understood, but... It does appear that several non. Uh, that it does appear that s certain non humanoid or non organic life forms do like to call the phenomenon home. But other than that, you know very little about the things. And Make sure we're taking readings because I'm sure astrometrics would love to get some more detailed scans. Mm hmm. Okay. Anybody doing anything else bef over the next day or so? No, actually, I'm I'm going to be doing the um, stellar cart cartography of it all. You know, keeping an eye, looking at all the stuff that's going. I'd probably send a data burst back to the station encrypted for Andro. Um, was it here? Uh, Deacon. Deacon. Yeah. Okay. And Let's see what she has to say about it all. Very well. You receive a one-word line saying, interesting. And on that note, we're going to cut to the particle fountain. So this is a interesting map picture that I found a while back. So two days go by, and the U.S. And the USS Lunette and the Elune ship approach the confrontation from the other side of the ship. And what you see are is a single Borg cube. There are three, uh, three Borg spheres. They're all holding stationary. And at the other... And there is a blockade of, at first glance, what appear to be Cosmozoan-style creatures or Cosmo Cosmozoan creatures. Large uh, creatures ranging from scale 3 to scale 6. Oh. Uh, there is... Uh, your bioscans are enough to show that the not only are the ships alive, uh, they actually have crew inside them that are also uh, sentient and alive. There are also two of these large, quote-unquote, brick ships that basically tanked everything you threw at them f during the combat from Cerberus Station. Uh, they are leaking a significant amount of gamma radiation that leaves your sensors, or your standard sensing scans, unable to penetrate them. Huh. Uh, if we're able to get it when we get there, how many life signs are on the spheres and the... Uh, cube, respectively. So, um, Verity is quick, uh, quick enough to answer that. 
Well, the the spheres hold are holding 200 drones e or 200 interlink uh, members each. The cube represents a concerted effort to extract uh, isolated pockets of interlink individuals over the last several years and is almost to full capacity with about 100,000. So this cube has acted as, uh, for lack of a better way of putting it, my almost uh, rescue ship of sorts? She nods. Yes. Hmm. Interesting. Trying to bring everyone home. Let's hope we can deliver on that. Although, near 100,000, well, then 600 on top of that, will they be able to uh, all be able to fit in the uh, hub? The Transwarp hub is a massive... Um... Keep in mind that the massive, or that the Transwarp hub is a structure large enough to accommodate frequent Borg cube transfers. So yeah, it can easily fit probably a billion people. Fair enough. The um, upon your arrival, you are noticing several communications sent between the uh, Alun. Uh, driver ship and the brick ships and the life ships let's call them that for the moment as one of the big brick ships begins moving ominously towards you as, and two of the little uh, tendril ships that look sort of like a small asteroid with tendrils out the back and a m mouth at the front move to flank it keeping far enough away that the radiation is not affecting them. I just uh, looked at uh, Demos. Keep shields down for just the moment. We don't want to act like we're scared. Roger that. So. Ah. Uh. There's a uh, series of communications going between all three vessels as they try to figure out what to do with you. Eventually, the uh, Elune commander uh, once again pops up on your screen. Commander, I would like to formally introduce you to the Okshirish on the largest of the ships and the Travaz on the organic ships the reason for this disruption the reason why this has taken so long is that the travaz hold this sector of space to be sacred they call this uh, phenomenon the beacon they claim to have I don't know, they claim to believe that it is a god or a manifestation of their gods it is not something that the Elune believe in but they are our friends, so we have to give them a certain amount of understanding. The Federation is a conglomerate of multiple species, multiple homeworlds, multiple religions. Uh, even on this bridge, you can see there's multiple species here. Um, I am reptilian, but I am only one of five sentient species from my planet alone. So I understand having to... Respect the wishes of friends in order for cooperation. His head bobs up and down, sort of retracting into the armor like a turtle before popping back out as it un as it understands and comprehends. Then you would know the difficulties at times that interspecies relationships can bring. Are you kidding me? My race is called the Zindi. We once attacked the uh, homeworld, which eventually became the seat of the Federation government. Yet here we are, now members of the Federation. There, uh, the, the commander's eyes blink several times. Very well. The Travash are interested in... Under, the Travash are 
quite frankly interested in destroying the interlink, melting them down for component parts and absorbing their nutrients. The Oakshirish are interested in just keeping the interlink out of the space. And it seems that I it now falls to me to ensure that nothing acts that this situation does not erupt into a firefight further. Yes. Uh I mean Commander, I'm here for the same reason. I don't want to have to go to war. I don't want us to not be friends. The Remnant and the Federation share a lot of very similar characteristics. Um, the Federation was formed out of a coalition against a mutual uh, enemy who, even now, that enemy is more of an ally than an enemy. Uh, over time, things change, and but the Federation has morphed to... Um, be a little bit better and be more understanding. I would love to be able to take care of the interlink, take it off your hands because we are, we've already uh, said that we will do that, but I'd also love to eventually open up ties, communication, trade with the remnant. And it's at this point that the aforementioned complication takes place. The Elune, com- uh, the Elune commander uh, raises a, th- a three-jointed hand, uh, and you realize that he has muted his side of the communication. A second Elune's neck quickly, al- or very quickly, leans into the visible screen as it whispers something into the commander's ear. The commander, the commander's head whips. Um, all the way back as far as the neck guard will allow his neck to go and lean forward and his eyes get very narrow. The uh, three-fingered hand drops and the uh, audio is once again resumed. Mr. Commander Dalrum uh, the in, the speech ah the universal translator is attempting to overlay emotion into the words but the words are still coming out very placid despite the fact that the commander's body language has become far more um tense i have just received word that the drone that the drone ships sent to reinforce the gateway patrol had just have just been destroyed, suffering a communications failure. I find this as they were as they have were the one of the last sent one of the last readings they posted was a similar ship of as a ship and a engine signature matching those of your Starfleet and Federation. You will explain yourself now. To my knowledge, when we left, at least from Deep Space 15, we were the only ship, the only other uh, starship at Deep Space 15 at the time that we left was in the process of being repaired from our aforementioned skirmish. Um, That being said, there are multiple, multiple, multiple um, fleets and uh, space stations throughout the galaxy um, the Federation has branched out quite a long ways here in recent years, uh, creating the uh, Deep Space Station Cooperative. Um, but there's to, that's to say I have no idea where where that specific ship would be coming from. I don't know what ship it would be. Well, come Commander, I must... Ah, sorry. I'm in the, the wrong window. Need to modify over here. Commander, I will give you the benefit of a doubt and say that you yourself may not be aware of what your Federation is doing here. However, 
rest assured that I might... Ah, because this is an, an attack on the Elune, we must depart to investigate more thoroughly. I will send you what our ship's sensors have shown us, and perhaps you can come down on... Perhaps it will shed some light onto this mystery. Please do, because, like I said, uh, to our knowledge, at least in this uh, sec, in you know, this mission, we were the only Federation ship di uh, dispatched. That being said, there are, we've run into species that have very similar uh, characteristics and even similar warp signatures to us. Uh, as soon as you get the information, we'd love to see it and compare it and see if we can come to the bottom of it of this interesting predicament okay and with that the commander the Elun, will cut communications and without a further word the ships will break break away from the uss lunette and begin to head back towards the gateway the sensor records that you find or that are sent to you are that of a visual a visual scan of the nebula and the gateway the ship the drone ships are responding to a, a flash of or a flash of the gateway turning on as if a ship is about to come out but no ship does come out uh, the Drone ships' logs enter an idle state for a few hours, and then they begin to static, leading to the eventual destruction, uh, leading to an eventual self-destruct due to lack of uh, command, due to lack of command protocols. What the one of the last shots that is sent is that of this sh uh, ship. It's not this size, obviously. It is scale three. But what is that? I'll tell whoever is at science or it'd be Kevin. Kevin freeze the image and run a, a image scan on that ship. We've got to identify uh, what it is. Most definitely, and just off of first glance, I don't recognize it. Neither do I. That's why it makes it even more of a situation. Okay. Do um do the sensor logs also pick up any transponder codes? No transponder codes. Uh, so this is going to be a Starship identification task, which I believe is con based. Uh, so this is going to be an insight con, and the USS Lunette can assist with um with computers plus con. This is going to be a difficulty of two. Uh, Dusk, are you here? I don't think she is. All right. oh, I have a 14. Go for it. I'm, I'm one less than that. All right. I'll go ahead and grab the lunette. So let's see. Computers. Would that be considered a small craft? Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's a scale three right. vessel, so sm not okay. in this instance. All right. The lunette was one away from a success. <laughs> Day late and a dollar short. <laughs> uh, I will buy a dice with for momentum? one momentum. Yes, mm -hmm. one momentum up. Uh, and that's three successes, go. so one momentum right nice. back. <clears throat> so, this ship is known as a Phantom class, and these, this information was given to, was made available on the, ah, to the computers of the uh, U.S. of these, ah, I've lost the ability to speak, I apologize. <sighs> <laughs> the ship, identified as the USS Black Shield, is a Starfleet intelligence vessel that has been operating covertly in the Lasai Expanse for at least the last three or four months under the commandership of Captain Sengral of the USS Nighthawk. Uh, 
it is there is very little on what it's actually been doing in the in the uh, space um, only that it is commanded by a um, the names the species name just it's the turtle um, species of the hang on I have the species name it is the Rige it's the Rigelian and uh, the Chelan the turtle types known as commander Truel. basically almost um, everything else is classified so we basically have the name the captain and the fact that it's under the Nighthawk, but nothing else? Basically, yes. I'm going to compare logs of the Lunette and the station, because I'm assuming our logs are current until we left, uh, for any sensor readings. Okay. Um, if you could please roll me a... Roll... This is going to be one of those few times where I do a control plus... Control plus science, and the ship will assist with computers plus science because you're looking over logs not active sensor oh, stuff i'm looking over for their warp uh frequency their signature to see if they've come back oh okay. so you're checking like a lot you're checking between the time that you okay yeah like i want to see like okay when did they leave at like or um like when did they leave and um are they back yet ah okay Okay, this is going to be a difficulty of three because you're looking for a shh, you're looking for a Starfleet vessel that doesn't want to really be seen. You're looking for a piece of hay in a needle stack. <laughs> uh, is that still science or is that security though? Because it's trying to hide from me. Yeah, potentially. That's um, if you spend two momentum f for the advantage, I'll let you use security. Yeah, I'll do that then. All right. That's a nice 15, then. Uh, weird question in this mm -hmm. case. Uh, can Nia assist on this task? Um, it'll either be Nia or the ship, whichever one you want to do. Okay. Since Could I the, assist? <laughs> since the Nighthawk doesn't want to be found, would firewalls apply as a focus here? Uh, not in this instance. Um, if okay. you had something along the line of power, power signatures, even starship identification would work in this instance. Okay. Cool. Then in that case, uh, because what would the task be for the ship again? Uh, ship would be computers plus sensors. Nope, sorry, computers, computers plus, uh, science. Computers okay. and science. Could I argue that I, maybe Dolrum could assist? What? One person could assist. I don't care who. Because uh, my control security is a 14. I have Starfleet Tactical Systems. I have Protocol. Mm -hmm. that uh, can I use that last momentum for an extra dice? Do you want to do that? I'd sure. Be fine with that. Mm -hmm. okay. And then I... McCall? Yeah. Two threat for an extra dice. <laughs> okay. Oh, good lord. So, but I um, feel like I have a better chance of succeeding the ship at a 14. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sitting and... at a 13, but yeah. Uh, Starfleet Tactical Systems, because... I'd let that work, yes. Excellent. That means and... it works for me, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and since I'm using the computer database for this, I do have my uh, neural link. Okay. So... And that Don't is five it. successes. <laughs> so... No! Yes! And that oh is seven God. successes. Okay, so f <laughs> you spend three momentum for the roll and you get four back. That's math, people. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> math is fun. Okay, so you learn a couple things. Uh, the first is that the j going over the sensor logs, now that you know what you're looking for, it does appear that the uh, USS Black Shield followed the lunette into the gateway. And, but it appears to have waited inside the gateway for an indeterminate period of time because it definitely did not leave the gateway with you. It has also not returned back to uh, Star, back to Cerberus Station. So it is still operating out here somewhere. All right. 
with that in mind, and with some I know what to look for, or the lack of their presence, I want to program the sensors to pick them up now. Or at least, you know, keep an eye out for them. Okay. Um, keep that... it. Wide berth sensor scan. Go! <laughs> okay. Um, if you're going to be doing this as... So, how I'm going to treat this is... You... They have a... Um, it's it's legally not called a cloaking system because that would make the Romulans mad, but it's totally a cloaking system. Um, but they so basically, if it comes down to you having to roll against their uh, detect their be invisible check, you will get uh, they ah you will get one automatic success on that roll. Okay. But they do not appear to be around you right now. Okay. So I'll I'll have the ship basically ping me if uh, they if anything potentially pops up. Understandable. Uh, Commander. Yes. We really need to start restricting certain ships coming through the gateway if they're uh, not going to be forthcoming. And I'm gonna send them the information that I have uh, of what I picked up uh, onto a pad and hand it them. I just start going through the pad. They were tailing us the entire time. Looks like. And they didn't even say hello. How rude! And it puts us in a heck of a predicament. Yep. Because uh, if this goes any more sideways, it can cost lives. Uh, at this point, Verity uh, steps forward. Commander, I understand the. I understand that your desire to, f under to investigate this, may seem important, but I'm. Attempt, but there are ten over ten thousand interlink lives at stake. I completely agree with you, Verity. But in order to open dialogue, we need to be, have a certain uh, mutual agreement of trust between the two parties, and if we proven with acts of Federation that we cannot control, I want to be able to deliver on our promise to get the interlink back home. I can't deliver if I can't be forthcoming with as much information. Welcome to the political side of war. Sometimes I think sometimes being a collective was easier. Yeah, welcome to individuality. It's a joy, isn't it? She shrugs. Yeah, beats death. Indeed. All right. Well, all I can say is we need to keep an eye out for the black shield. I almost called it a black sheep. <laughs> you wouldn't be the first. So keep the sensors open for that at the time. If we're asked, it is a vessel that we are still determining the um, origin as well as the motive of. Understood. So let's see if we can get these talking, this talking underway. <laughs> now, speaking of talking... Um, one of the, uh, with the departure of the Elune ships, you've now attracted the attention of the smaller organic vessels no, uh, belonging to the Travaz. Eventually, uh, in a holding pa after being in a holding pattern for an uncomfortable period of time, one of the larger ones w with a chitinous maw that splits into three sections limed with teeth and sort of dripping, leaving a trail of bile in its wake, which is a, I believe this was a scale five ship, so it's actually a little larger. There we go. Comes towards you. <clears throat> there, and at this point, I need some, uh, who's manning communications? Can they please roll me an insight plus 
con test. And the ship can assist with communications plus con. And this is going to be difficulty of three. A ship's shooting for a 12. Well, I guess going down the list, what's everyone's inside con? Because mine is also a 12. 13 for me. All right, Kevin. <laughs> uh, 14 for me. Never mind. Demos, <laughs> double duty. Well, you're playing a wharf, communications and weapons. Yeah. It works. Yeah, it does. Take it a dice. <laughs> Yes. Uh, to ease momentum, sorry. Yep. Yes, got it. Uh, do no focuses. Because it's just craft identification, right? Uh, craft identification or communication systems, either or. All right. Here. Yeah. Well, Ooh. that's the three from Mr. Demos. Nice. Anyone rolling ship? Uh, nothing I from the ship. It. Nothing from the ship. <clears throat> Demos, at first you think that it might be some form of um, brinksmanship as you know two potentially hostile vessels trying to stare each other down however the, you uh, you begin to notice a pattern of um, lights that are forming along the chitinous maw they're flashing in a bit of they're flashing in a pattern and the pattern is soon picked up by the uh, uh, Travaz might craft the smaller ones it appears they're attempting some form of communication uh, I'll send information off to science it's like uh, let's pipe that into the universal <clears throat> all right um, we don't no one's actually mentioned we have a science officer on board but now would be a good time to say which supporting character might be a uh, here. I mean, actually, I can double his science as well. Oh, well then, Mr. Keevan. Let's yeah, roll. Let me, yeah, Ooh. let me look into this, Demos. And what am I rolling, McCall? Uh, that's a good question. Let's roll reason plus science. And the classic. Yeah, reason science. And if anyone wants to assist, because this is going to primarily be a personnel task, not a ship task, one person can assist. Could I somehow use my advisor talent? Uh, what does that do again? Whenever you assist a character using command, the character is being assisted. May re-roll 1d20. Hmm. Well, because you're the diplomatic officer, I will allow you to use command, yes. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty it, it... of two, I should say. Gotcha. And is this having to do anything with about alert... No, no, it's not about culture, so never mind. I was going to use cultural flexibility to decrease the difficulty. Well, actually, cultural flexibility would be a half-decent one in this instance. Yeah, because you're you're deciphering a communication. Culture's based in communication. Nice, so that's going to reduce it to a difficulty one. Go for it. With advisor. <laughs> uh, what, am, what am I rolling? A, uh... um, you're, uh, because you're assisting, let's see. Let's use presence plus command in this instance for you, Dalrum. Uh, composure? Not in this instance. It was worth a shot. Yeah, I still got it. And that's going to actually give us two momentum. That's two momentum. Awesome. We're at five, everybody. Yeah. So, Keevan, based on your understanding of what's going on, the fact that they haven't attacked you, and the fact that there doesn't appear to be much in the way of actual communications or Look for, for better, or, ah, let me start again. Because these Trevaz ships don't seem to have a heck of a lot of mechanical infrastructure, it does seem that they, they don't even seem to possess a form of even short-range radio communication on board. It seems that they are messaging some for their l l blinking lights appear to be a pattern of sorts. Uh, in this instance, it seems to be at least one of greeting, if their body language might be a bit aggressive. Uh, 
Commander, I believe they're trying to say hello to us. So I, I it's not an aggressive stance here. Great. How the heck do we say hello back? Um, I mean, we have some form of lighting on the outside of the ship, don't we? Yes, but it's not typically able to mess, like, communicate with that. Other than we literally go to the rooms around the ship and turn on and off the lights. I'm, I'm talking about on the outside of the ship, not the inside. I mean, like, we have external... There on are, the hull? Yeah, there are navigation lights. For some reason, there's always a light that highlights the ship's name, for example. Not to um, mention, I can always try to, you know, shunt extra, more or less power to the deflector to kind of compensate as another light. Well, let's see if we can communicate with them. See if you can put Way together a message. Okay. Communicating with the Space Piranha. We are not calling them the Space Piranha. <laughs> and <laughs> it's just like, Neo's just kind of like, aww. <laughs> okay, so and what are you attempting? Finding Nemo. <laughs> I'm a piranha. <laughs> uh, okay, so you are attempting an alien form of communication. Let's roll. Let's see how well this works. Uh, let's roll a control plus command or control plus engineering. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of, let's say difficulty of three. And I'm going to spend some threats to increase the complication range 17 to 20. Oh, boy. oh good lord. Um... I'm gonna. I'll shoot. I'll try to lead with my thirteen c control engineering and use. Um, um, I can possibly cultural... uh, lead with because my control engineering is sixteen. Well, my control command is fourteen with advisor. Yeah. So I give keep in and reroll. Yeah. Also, I'm thinking if I can use cultural. If since we're communicating, cultural flexibility again to reduce the difficulty of this from three to two. Sounds right. reasonable. Thank God my Denobulin is finally taking <laughs> taking use. <laughs> right. That It's a great ability, but it's getting to use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I will assist with control command using advisor. Survey says that's two from Keevan. Nice. I don't think I have a focus. Can we just frame oh, for... these? <laughs> oh. uh, I mean, the complication. I mean, we yeah. have the momentum. We have the momentum. My advisor lets me reroll one of Kevin's, not mine. I would, I would say we buy it off because we have in the this situation we need anyway. In this situation, let's buy the sucker off. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, and we've and yeah, we've got the success with the two from me, so we're good. Hashtag sad GM. <laughs> you already had your complication that we let you roll with. Yeah. You'll get one. Oh, we shall see. Okay. The comp. So, um, Kevin, you believe? Uh, you've uh, yeah. once again, I speak before I talk, or I speak before I think. <laughs> it's been a day. All right. <clears throat> it's okay. been a week, man. I yeah. get it. Oh, yeah, it has. Okay. Anyways. Kevin, you believe that you see a pattern in the lights and believe it best to mimic it uh, by utilizing the uh, ship's exterior navigation lights, as well as a few choice um, internal lights uh, with windows. Uh, you are able to commun You are able to send a response pattern. Commander, I think we even. I think I got something here. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. The, in response, both of the uh, little uh, s size three ships, the ones that look like asteroids with teeth and tendrils, uh, form up in front of you and uh, begin heading towards the giant maw of the 
um, well, let's just call it the Maw ship for now. One of them veers off to the port, while the other one enters. And you can see, and you can see the Maw staying open, and there's particular docking organs. Uh apertures yes that's a good term docking apertures valves where one of the small ships will enter and sit well i'm going to take mimicry mimicry as some a way of communications bringing us in maneuvering thrusters and docking thrusters only let's go meet our new friends Aye, sir. Engaging maneuvering thrusters. You, uh, you bring the ship in, and there is, an ominously, the giant maw's maw begins to close behind you. Uh, the faint, the faint light of the beacon. Um, begins to uh, fade as the ship, as the lunette enters the giant mouth of the creature and it begins to close around it. However, it is not lightless. Um, as the light, or as the exterior light diminishes, um, in internal uh, bioluminescence begins to, uh, begins to flicker to life. Illuminating quite a bit of activity inside this uh, giant cavern of a creature. Creature ship, maybe the best term for it. <clears throat> it's an organic ship. Mm -hmm. To now, my knowledge, yeah. the only organic ship uh, Federation has ever come in contact with was Species 8472. Well, there were also those Oma from the Shobad Nab, but they were kind of repurposed. Oh, uh, yeah. And it's gone too, but that's another story. Now, I really wish I could do a... had a good, you know, set piece for this, but sadly, internals of a space... or organic spaceship interior comes up with all sorts of, let's just say, not nice images... And other things that are not very appropriate. So we're going to have to go to the imagination station for this part. <laughs> okay. So the ship comes, uh, the ship settles into an organic um, aperture, and the there's sort of a oozing, squishing sensation as it forms up around the lower section of the ship, forming a air t forming a tight seal. It would be very difficult for you to escape or leave in a hurry without uh, causing some damage to the creature. You are on the... Uh, as the maw finally seals shut, the the environment outside turns to class M as the creature seems to breathe into its giant aperture. There are several sm um, life signs of uh, humanoid size, I should say. They're not really human, but um, they are definitely watching the ship from afar. Well, showtime, everybody. And who is going to be coming out of the ship? Um, I will. Yeah, yeah. both. Okay, so let me get tokens ready here because we have a heck of a lot of them. Okay, characters. So we are having out Commander Dalrum, Mr. Demos. Who else? Keelan will st stick on the ship. Okay. 
is Niles coming out? Or not Niles, uh <laughs> Nia. Yeah. Yeah. We're we're basically there. Um let's um hmm. Come on, Nia, let's go. And with uh, that, well, Nia is grabbed by the now, now the commander's ordering me. I basically have to go. No, it's uh, I wrap my elbow around you. Come on, we're going. <laughs> Your family, whether you like it or not, come on. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> okay. One of those. Well, it's also one of those, if, I, if you're in my eyesight, you can't do anything wrong. I'm watching you, son-in-law. <laughs> we we oh. aren't at that step yet. <laughs> I wasn't aware that was in the works, but hey, props to you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Exiting through one of the uh, external landing ramps, uh, there there is the loud hiss from the pneumatics as your as the ramp descends, and there is a flurry of activity of individuals that look somewhat like this. Uh, as they uh, quickly scuttle about to come and s to properly orient themselves to greet you. Uh, so they are an, an insectoid species with the head and more head and upper body being similar to that of a sort of like a millipede kind of thing. Uh, large buggy eyes, uh, no mouth per se, but sir, but a lot. Well, sorry. There is a small mouth. There's a few mandibles around it. And then some probus proboscis, I think is the proper term. Waving cilia will continue to go down their necks, so to speak. Uh, where their nose should be uh, is two large antennae that are um, hairy in nature and are constantly on the move, flickering and tasting the uh, atmosphere around them. They, the first groups are armed. They're they're wielding some sort of long-barreled, solid-shot weapon. Some of them are carrying swords on their backs for some weird reason. I should mention that they have two arms and two legs. So there are several of these that are taking up protective uh, positions around the bug's interior or the bug ship's interior. There is a loud click and a chitter as one of the individuals who is dressed quite differently than everyone else, um, where the others are militaristic in their dress. Uh, this one appears more of a priest wearing a flowing purple robes that stretch from the top from where his neck would meet his body, all the way to the ground. It seems to have been stained over with several years of use and contact with the very much alive and slightly disgusting and moist uh, interior of this uh, creature ship. More in... Uh, it takes a few seconds for your uh, translator to pick up what he says. Uh, one can assume, or one can thank the um, Zindi insectoid species for introducing the for introducing typical insectoid co converse, communication patterns, which makes this far easier than the GM having to make chick chicks and clitters. Oh God, that came out horrible. I apologize. <laughs> uh, I meant to say clicks and chitters, but, you know, okay, <laughs> that's fine. Making a clip. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Mm. Well, it just so happens I'm Zindi, so interspecies, I'm just a reptilian. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. More, in... yeah. more, inter... more intruders trespass upon the beacon. But you, but unlike those that wait outside, you have the blessing of our allies to be here, and so your presence is tolerated. You are here to. Uh, you are here in a. Uh, you are here in assistance of the 
Borg, correct? You could say that, although we call them the Interlink now. My name is Commander Dolrum. This is Lieutenant Commander Demos and Chief Petty Officer Nia. Nia will just sort of give like a shy wave. We are from the United Federation of Planets. I am High Lord Shizjaz, or Hive Lord Shizjaz of this clan family. It has been our sacred duty to protect the beacon from all interlopers. It has been I sullied. The, me the, me the mechanoids trespass heavily, trespass, soils the light that is emanating from this great beacon. Oh, and as, sorry. As soon as the as soon as more of the uh, ah, as soon as more of our high families show arrive, we shall ex we shall purge them once and for all. Well, that we don't want you guys to have to go to all the trouble. We are here to escort the interlink back to our space where we are. Uh, Providing asylum to them. We have heard, we had heard tales that several of the Borg had found refuge. Do you the... know much about the Borg? We know that they are conquerors. We know that they seek to destroy or convert. They seek to take all beauty from the stars and turn it into a f into a yeah, into a featureless canvas with which nothing shall be painted on ever again. That was before. These are different now. The original collective would take individuals, people you would know and call friends and family and alter them in such a way that they could no longer perceive you as friend or family. And they would do horrible things. These Borg are free from that. They are trying to reclaim their identity. That is unfortunate. However, they are still bound to the actions of the past. And it is the and it is the it is the canvas that they have painted for which that they must now be judged upon. Not what they well, what they paint in the future is not written or is not set yet however and it is not our job to assist them in putting fresh paint to canvas well hive lord i don't believe well and the federation doesn't believe that the faults of the past should be something that people should necessarily innocent people should bear the burden of the interlink the now Borg um, have been set free our government and the Federation assisted with the destruction of the collective and now the interlink are those who still had individuality Uh, mentioning your the Federation's um, assistance in dealing with the Borg at the first place, uh, his posture becomes less hunched and more uh, rigid and, st and upright. Your, if your claims of past heroics against such a uh, f against such Ah, against this artist most foul is accurate then your weight then your words may carry weight within us or within the council the so, federation played a major role in the destruction of the collective on multiple occasions because the blows that we took over time on them weakened the collective now, is that, are we necessarily responsible for the actual destruction of the collective? We were a major player. 
However, like I said, we also see that the interlink are the remnants of that, and we want to help bring them back to themselves, help them reestablish themselves, help them get out of enemy territory, stop them from painting a negative picture, and frankly, Hive Lord, I'm sure that even within your own species, and maybe even you yourself, have done things in your past that you don't want to be deemed as just because you did it, that's the way you are. We all make mistakes. In this case, the Borg were individuals like you, me, and the commander here. Let's say we're painting a beautiful picture, and then the next the Borg take us, that picture becomes horrid, and now they're trying to reclaim who they once were. They had no control over their actions due to the hive mind of the collective. <clears throat> uh, hive Lord Shizjaz, which again is a name I have to be very careful saying, <laughs> <laughs> takes, uh, you know, I come up with these names, you know, a day or two before the session. I'm like, hey, that sounds like fun. And then I actually start speaking them aloud on a regular basis. I'm like, ooh. And then you're like, oh, no. Oh, don't, don't worry. <laughs> I'm waiting for that clip to be made. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it will show up someday. When we're all famous. Anyways. Um... The Hive... Uh, the Hive... Ca uh, hive families are will be arriving within... Two bursts of the beacon. There will be a meeting. You will be allowed to attend and speak your... Uh, uh, to speak your story and paint your picture. Rest assured, though, there are several who will paint far bleaker pictures. Trust me, Hive Lord. No one understands having a bleaker picture than me and my species. You are welcome to want to explore our ship if you if you wish. We would like to explore yours in return. The hive the hive families exist and cooperation on equal terms. That can certainly be arranged. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Demos here is my chief of security. Um, he would be glad to show you around the ship. Mechanoid, yeah. yes. Not Borg. Acceptable. Well, come on aboard. I'll show you around. All right. We're not... We don't need to make a scene of it unless you want to, but is there anything in particular you wish to show the hive... Uh, the Ah. To show the... Uh, to show ah to show Entourage. the travaz yes and this here is called a toaster it takes <laughs> cold bread Ooh. <laughs> now he's just going to do the standard tour uh, show them the holodeck you know just for giggles I don't I don't think you have a holodeck on the I thought the Lynette did did it oh maybe it did I think it does oh um well apparently it's a small it one. yeah it's more like the hollow closet but yes <laughs> yeah. Hey, this is uh, the hollow water closet. Yeah, oh. You know, it's occurred to me that with the adventure of hollow decks, you don't need to have um, bathrooms with uh, species specific parts anymore. Mm. Maybe. Mm. I don't know. That's I don't a know thought. If I'd go that far. That's a thought that probably should not go on stream. Okay. <laughs> that there. Hmm. Are you showing them the bridge by chance? Uh, 
If so, I am sending a message to the uh, Borg to hide before they are there. <laughs> a wise idea. I was about to say, it's like, we should probably hide the Borg that are on our ship. The interlink. But yes, Can they are like, hiding. Okay. Yeah, have them in the ready room, and the ready room will be just like, eh, yeah, no entry unless it's Starfleet personnel coming in and going. It's, well. it's the captain's ready room. You can only enter with his permission. His explicit Sorry. permission. Uh, he is quite, uh, he is quite taken with the uh, technological um, sleekness of it. Um, there are several comments on how the control nodes are flat, but artistically, uh, but are uh, artistically efficient. They are quite taken with the engine room. They seem to find the thrumming of the engine to be quite soothing. They they call it the eternal heartbeat. Good thing I was looking at the Lunette's engine before we were leaving. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, you wouldn't want to have an an arrhythmic uh, engine core. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we don't. They are more than happy to take you on a similar tour of their ship. Um, being scale six, it is much larger. Uh, the core, everything is damp and very humid. Uh, you see them interacting with, um, they sort of look like, what's the phrase? Well, let's just call them growths um, that are uh, protruding from irregular spaces along various hallways and corridors. The uh, the species has a multi uh, multi clawed hands that are inserted into the growth and sort of use them like um, gloves to manipulate the ship itself. They don't go in they don't go into deep detail about how they how they work with the ship, but it seems like a very symbiotic relationship where they tame a or yeah where they tame one of their life or one of their ships uh, and some are encouraged to grow certain ways and eventually they're tamed by a hive lord or an equerry for the smaller vessels and it becomes sort of a life bond Intriguing. Yes. The uh, he's ha because you showed him your control uh, center first. He will show you his. Uh, his control center doesn't have the screens that yours does. Instead, it is a, a very thick membrane, uh, translucent. So similar to like um, an eye lens or lens of glasses that um, an individual with the right control um, node is able to focus in certain directions. Definitely not as good as the sensors, but it's what they use. Now, with the screens and, like, there's an equivalent of consoles here, right? Ah, uh, yes. They're more organic growths, but yes. Um, I'm going to turn to uh, the Hive Lord and be like, uh, would you mind if I... Uh, I guess the term would be play around with this a bit. It's interesting to me. <clears throat> There's a little bit of a a quiver of his uh, whisker antennae um, as he lets out a very quick screech. Uh, one of his subordinates steps away from the node. And... Um. If it would make you more comfortable, uh, I'll point to one of these individuals if they're with us. Mm -hmm. You may have one of them watch my actions as to make sure they're not hostile. He makes a sound that almost translates to, duh. <laughs> and I'll just kind of, you know, uh, do... The equivalent of like running a 
basic scan of the area if I can even figure that out. So your attempt, so your attempt, so the way to operate these things is you basically jam your your hand into a uh, sticky orifice, um, and it binds around your binds around your fingers. And I need you to please roll me a. Hmm. I wasn't actually thinking someone was going to do this. So. Oh, good. <laughs> let's roll me a fitness plus medicine test, please. This is going to be Ooh. a difficulty of two. Okay. Um, alien technology is the focus. I'm not entirely sure this. Uh, this isn't really technology, so no. Well, it's what they use for technology. Yeah. Um, it sounds more like biology it's certainly to me. alien to him. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'll let you. I'll let that work. Okay. Um. Man, his fitness medicine is not good. Yeah, it was um, going to be three, but because I let I already knocked it down one because of your symbiote. Yeah. Um. I mean, this is technically their version of like a machine, right? Yeah. Um, I'm going to pop my determination because this <laughs> doesn't look hot for me otherwise. Okay. Uh, of any machine is my play thing. Which takes on a bit of a weird turn because it's a bio machine, but okay, yeah. <laughs> I I shall I shall seduce the machine. It's fine. Yeah. Um, oh, oh the phrasing that needs to happen right now. <laughs> uh, this session, Walter, man. Are you listening? <laughs> um, what's the how many? Uh, how, okay, we have three momentum. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna try and do the third die because. I'm shooting at a solid nine right now. I mean, you've already popped your determination, so you get the two successes you need. Now the rest yeah. is just doing it in style. And that is one six. Hey. So that's one momentum for you. So there, uh, so Nia, there's the a weird sense of deja vu. It was. You haven't felt anything even close to what you feel now, except possibly when the symbiote was first implanted in you, where it began to connect into your system and you felt a presence. Um, it's similar to this. Um, the as you min, min, as you move your hand through the orifice, uh, it moves back, and eventually your hand goes numb and all of a sudden there's a sharp pain that shoots up your arm and as the pain reaches the back of your spine you're able to gain a do uh, you know those you know near death experiences where someone says that they're dead and they're looking over themselves it's yeah, sort of, it's kind of like that. Yeah, it's sort of like that. You're looking down upon yourself and Demos and Dalrum. And ev and you take on a awareness that you have never felt before. Like, for the first time, you can taste space. It tastes like fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say probably, like, the entire time this is happening, you're just... Hey, hearing Nia, like, suppress a very muffled, like, painful, like, just groan. He's just going, like, you just hear, like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> huh. This is interesting, to say the least. Um, as you begin to try to explore your surroundings, um, mm -hmm. the, you're getting a mental pushback from the ship itself. So if you really wanted to start doing stuff, it's going to be opposing roles. But it's basically giving you a very the nickel and dime tour 
through your mind and senses. Gotcha. And basically, it's only showing me the uh, the control center. Yeah, the control center and the space, the brief amount of space around it. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, I won't push any further. I'll pull out. Oh no. <laughs> uh, you uh, you pull out of the orifice and leaving a uh, as you pull out, your hand is covered in a bit of a goop. And you open your hand and realize that a large tendril had poked a hole through it. And just as you begin to shake it off, it retracts willingly, leaving a bit of a bleeding mess behind. Ow. Oh. Ow. Hive Lord Shizjaz. There, I said it. (laughs) Hive Lord Shizjaz. (laughs) Quivers in what you believe is a bit of a laugh. <laughs> there we go. Session's done. Ugh. And clipped. Yep. Ugh. Make a note of that time code, folks. <laughs> because we all know how good I am at editing these things. That's staying in. <laughs> so, weird question, Hive Lord. Um, I was only able to see this room in particular and no further. Was it because I haven't formed a relationship with this? I'm not sure if ship is really the right word to use here, but. The Hive Lord um, motions to another uh, worker at another console. That is because this, and that's because... Uh, she was ensuring, or she was working with the creature to ensure that you could only get a taste of the, of what we see every day. I see. Well, I appreciate your precaution. It was a little uh, surreal, to say the least. <laughs> um, Mr. Demos and Dalrum. Um, because Nia is otherwise occupied, if both of you could quickly roll me um, perception plus medicine or perception plus security. Wait, no. Uh, how about... Yeah, le- Michael. <sighs> yes, I'm thinking of D&D for some silly reason. If you could please roll me... Um, pr- yeah. Roll me insight plus command or insight plus security, please. Uh, difficulty of one. And whichever of you beats it by the greatest will add that to the momentum pool. Uh, uh, the, would any of my focuses apply? Uh, f- if they are... Um, situational awareness would be one of them. Survival? I'll let survival happen, yes. Yay! Two. All right, two from Demos. And two from Dollar. Two okay, Dollar. so add one momentum, please. Aye, sir. So what you guys notice is interesting is that um, Nia's, ha- Nia's hand is still bleeding and dripping viscous goop. Um, where the blood is hitting on the uh, ground is spawning a... Sm- uh, there appears to be a small insectoid... Well, a small insect colony of... It looks like leeches are being spurted forth from a maintenance duct, for lack of a better term. Under one of the consoles, they squirm their way over and begin to clean up the mess. Well, Nia, I believe we're going to have to take you back to get you patched up. Um, that's probably a good idea, yeah. Indeed, those are also very interesting creatures cleaning up the floor. The the Hive Lord, whose name I refuse to say in the moment, uh, cocks his head. My, I have, most species seem to have a way of cleaning up after their messes. Ours happens to be produced by our, by, ah, by our ship. Intriguing. Oh. To be fair, Hive Lord, within the Federation, within the Federation, I don't believe any 
member species has organic ships like this. We've only run into organic ships only but a few times. It, they are uncommon. It was our, our defense against the uh, Borg. They deemed these ships to be imperfect and were unwilling to wipe their ah, wipe their color from the galaxy. It was incompatible with their vision. So they either ignored us or destroyed us. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I've load I believe I have some preparations to do before the rest of the Hive families arrive. Okay. Yes, us too. We sh allow these to escort you back to your ship. You will be released if you wish. That would be probably the best so we can prepare but also be aware and uh, be in communication with uh, those that we need to be. All right. We are going to cut ourselves back to... Uh, so, while that's been going on outside, um, Keevan, are you doing anything inside? Or does anybody wish to do anything with Keevan inside? The lunette. Phrasing? Uh, so we're way past that point now. <laughs> Mostly just trying to monitor everything, get some ideas. Um, yeah, that's about it. Just kind of sciencing doing what a good science officer would do right now, which would be kind of getting a lay with the land without making invasive scans of everything. Okay. Um, because I'm curious, mm -hmm. and we're in an area that makes me curious, um, I want to ask uh, one of these fine um, gentlemen insectoids uh, if they happen to know anything about the Dread Empire. Oh. Mm. Uh, tell you do me a favor and roll me 1d20, please. We'll okay. just see if you pick one of the right people. And I'll say you're aiming for high, and you got high. One of the individuals who is escorting you back does say that they are aware of several... Uh, that they're aware that this area of space had been settled long before. But the individuals have were long were wiped out. They're not entirely sure when or how long ago. The name Dread does not ring any bells to them, but the aesthetic that they describe uh, does match what a decon remarked about her uh, species predilection for architectural taste, aka lots of uh, gothic, lots of gothic. Accentures. Yeah. I just ask if, like, if you come across anything like files, records, discoveries, if if you could send them my way. Well, he will. Uh, he if any if there is any news to be found, there are probably more that are they're more qualified than him. His place in this his place in the hive is a warrior bug. Oh. He's just has a hobby. That's all. Well, I thank him for his time, and mm -hmm. I'll head back to the ship. Uh, so, uh, Keevan, um, just you—you yes. uh, you receive word of the commander's imminent return to the uh, station. Ninety-nine percent unharmed. Uh, Lieutenant, or your chief, your chief petty officer Nia is going to have to spend a brief moment in sick bay. But nothing major. Uh, at this point, Lieutenant Dusk speaks up from her console. So, uh, Lieutenant Commander, you remember how the interlink hid in the commander in the captain's office when they came through, right? I didn't see them leave, and I've been at my post for the last six hours. Have you? Yeah, I haven't really noticed anything. Hmm. 
computer. Uh, location of Verity and Rusuk, I believe. Rusik. Rusik. Individuals Verity and Rusik are not on the USS Lunette. And on that note, we are going to cut to break. <laughs> Let's already then. Okay, and we're back. Uh, Cap Commander Dalrum, you have just made it back on the ship. And you and Demos have received word that uh, the interlink individuals are not present. Great. Do we have any uh, records of their transport? That would be a security. That would be a security check of the internal sensors, which would be up Demos or Kevin's area of expertise, I think. Given that this is a ship's logs thing, this is only going to be a difficulty of one. So, insight security, a uh, ship or an individual can assist with. Uh, no, let's roll reason security, and then the ship can assist with computers plus security. Reason security? Mm hmm. Uh, intruder protocol, because Perfect. now they're gone. Yep. Yeah, excellent. Difficulty one, you said? Difficulty one. Alright. Uh, you know what? Since we have so much, I'm going to take a momentum for an extra dice. Ah, thank you for rem reminding me. This is a scene change. You lose one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know that's not big effect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. I'm using the computer, though, right? Mm hmm. Hey, neural interface. Yes, indeed. I want the momentum. And you said sensor security for the ship? Uh, sensor security, yes. Oh, uh, no, computer security, sorry. Yeah. That was a good trade off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that is three. Nope. Uh, one momentum already. And let's wait to see what the ship does. Two momentum. Oh, two. <clears throat> Back up to it. Back up. So they were hiding in. So they were hiding in the commander's off or the captain's office, as the records show. They were sent. They went there voluntarily when the uh, Travaz were brought on board. Mm. Uh, due to the sensors not being as thorough or as accurate as those on the on the ship, there's not a record of what went on inside the quarters. But they were in there for a grand total of about 10 minutes, and then they materialized out with a localized transporter effect. Uh, what do I transporter effect? Like hours or theirs? Uh, it appears to be, a, the transporter effect appears to be a Borg signature. All right, I'm going to, uh, are we outside of the ship yet? Uh, nope. This uh, this is happening just as you guys are be are making ready to leave. All right, Commander. It looks like they may have beamed aboard one of the Borg vessels. I mean, I could understand why, but a little heads up would have been appreciated. A little bit, yeah. Once we're out of the carapace, is what we'll go with, the ship, um, hail, the, hail the cube and see if um, they were answer there. I have a feeling that they're going to be there. Very well. <clears throat> yeah, I'll do as he says. Okay. So, we are going to cut back to the roiling interspecies chaos that is happening outside. As I get the center everything for stream. There's that. And there's that. And this one is still inside. <clears throat> okay, so in the few hours that you have been inside the Maw's gullet, the 
situation appears to have gotten a little more crowded out front. The uh, astro, the I'm just going to call them what I had called them. They're called termite classes. The little, um, the small ones, the termite classes. Uh, they appear to have gotten several more over the last hour or two. They arrive in system. Uh, the, the ones with the uh, large scything claws and the protruding prob proboscis. Uh, there's been a couple more of them arriving too. They're all, they're called wasp, I call them wasp classes. <clears throat> but so far the own, only the giant maw is unique. Okay, I uh, and sorry, I'm interrupting. No, I said intriguing. Mm -hmm. Very much so. The uh, the three spheres have uh, sort of withdrawn a bit and are now within um, immediate proximity to the interlink cube. As the small ones begin to move ever closer in a more threatening manner. The Maw has brought you up slightly closer as well. <clears throat> okay, so you're attempting to hail the uh, interlink cube? Yes. Okay. The cube... Um, do I... I thought I had a Borg a standard drone. I don't. That's odd. Uh, I must have imported it into the other game. Okay, too late now. Uh, random Borg number 8293 um, appears. Hello, Starfleet. I'm Kaven. Verity told us to expect you. Yeah. My name's Commander Dolorum. We were just contacting you just to make sure everything was going all right. We also got according to our sensors at least, Verity uh, had transported over to at least one of your vessels. Stand, stand by please, Commander. Commander, we're not since the Interlink has lost communication with both Verity and Rusik. We're going to transmit our information over to you on the transport as I point to Kievan off screen to do it. Um, because according to us at, I say the timestamp, mm -hmm. they were transported from my ready room, which they went to willingly because we were giving a tour to the species, um, the hive yeah the travaz the travaz whatever they are um we were giving a tour to the travaz and not that we have any issues with the interlink but we want didn't want to sour relations to get you guys home stand by we will attempt to lo i will attempt to locate them let and... me know what you you find did I, by chance, put the full board cube stats in? By Jove, I did. Okay. Let's have an NPC ship roll. Okay. Well, one success. That's one success, and now the ship rolls. Yep. The uh, the pause is almost instantaneous, and you can see, Commander, their life signs are still emanating from the ship that you just exited. And um, Dalrum, or not Dalrum, um, Demos. Demos, uh, remember when you gave uh, Verity your personal contact code? Mm -hmm. um, she communicates to you through the. Uh, communication node that you use to interlink into 
Interlink. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Ah. So I, I guess I'm just standing there and I'm just like thinking in my head. I was like, yeah. it's, what is it? It's a voice inside your head. Rusik, uh, you must help us stop Rusik. He's infected. He's attempting to assimilate the sh- Ma ship. So he said it took. He said that we're going too slowly. Give me your position now. And you receive it almost instantaneously. All right, Commander Dolan, we have a situation. I'm going to have to beam aboard this vessel again. Get them on communication. Can we beam their life signs out? I hope so, but you know the Borg are. Um, yeah, I'll try and... First, I'll try and establish a lock on Rusik. Okay. Uh, roll me... Well, actually, because... Well, you have her location, so you have... That will decrease dif- difficulty... And considering that the creature is completely organic, there's not much to interfere with sensors, so this is only going to be a difficulty of one, and you have enough momentum already, so I'm just going to say that, and because, let's face it, he's metal on a organic spaceship, so yeah, he is found easily. Uh, his position is roughly one, is roughly 50 meters away from that of Verity. They appear to be in a, what might be a stomach-type area? A large cavern, or, oh, yeah, a large cavern in the structure, or in the ship. Okay, um, I'm going to head down to the transporter room Mm -hmm. and establish a containment field um, on the door itself, not the pad, Mm -hmm. and I'm going to beam them both. Okay, and you're doing this by yourself, or is anyone coming to help? Um... Uh, Neil will help with this. Okay. Okay. Nia, you see Demos basically jump from his uh, position and follow course. Let's bring Midas into here. We'll bring. Hello, Nia. Midas. Hello. He touches the bulkhead, turns into gold. Everyone's confused. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Let's not be that's mixing. Not, um, I was going to say, that's not where I was going. <laughs> there's been enough of... Um, there's been enough suggestion of uh, interactions this session already. <laughs> no, we didn't have more. It's okay. <laughs> okay, so the uh, transporter test, please. You are uh, This is going to be a difficulty of three. Uh, so s- control plus engineering. Ship can assist with sensors plus engineering. Um, since I was in position, did that make the difficulty go down? Um, no. It. Um, I will lower the difficulty by one because you know where they are and they're fairly easily identifiable. So difficulty two. Okay. I am going to take. Uh, uh what's just out of curiosity? What's Demos's uh, control engineering? Uh, fourteen. Okay, it's saying that. You probably want to do it, but just saying, like, Neo's a 16 for that combination. Could I use Intruder Protocol? Because I want to get them out there because they're invading. I think I would say that would be a good thing, yes. Okay, so I got the focus done. Um, yeah, I'm going to take a momentum for a third dice. All right. And, and on second... You know what? Sorry, I'm going to do one of the few things, rare times where I retroactively GM. Uh, spend two momentum for the advantage to lower the difficulty by one, please. Sure. Yep. Um, and I still have saved milestones, so I'm just going to use one of those for um, an extra um, two success. Okay. You said it was sensors engineering for the uh, lunette? Yes, that's right. That is three <laughs> from there and one from there. Okay, and um, one. So three successes. So that's what um, five in total, I believe. Yeah, because I'm using my yeah. milestone. So there comes three momentum right back, and one complication from Nia. We could buy that off. I say we buy it off because we're going to hit six momentum. Might as well buy it off. We just net one momentum. Yeah, yeah. we might as well. Aw. Fine. <laughs> okay. 
I had a I had a, I had a fun idea for a complication too. Oh, I had one too. It was going to be good. You're not simulated. <laughs> no, I was going to say that. Uh, what's the name of the one that's infected? Was it Ruskin Rusik. or something like that? Yeah. Rus, it's like, oh, Rusik appears right near us, but Verity's behind the uh, force field. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so speaking of people showing up on force fields. Uh, Verity... The force fields, I, I didn't want to state, I said the force fields are on the doors, not yep. the pad. Yep. Sorry, yeah. Speaking of transporters, so Verity appears. Uh, she is uh, sort of slumped. Um, as in, So she's not standing. Rusik, on the other hand, is. Uh, he realizes where he's, where he's at and begins taking a step forward. Um, oh, I'm immediately going up there and I'm decking him in the face. Okay, um, this is opposed uh, daring plus security rolls, I believe. How many times can I use my milestones? Um, I have five. Oof, you have five, wow. Oh, you yeah, were so close to, to six. Yeah, you were so close to spending them to get an arc. Oh, um, no, I asked you that last time. You said no. I thought you could. I thought I said yes. Oh, if that's the case, well, then I'm... Hmm, yeah. okay. Yeah, if you, <laughs> if you have six milestones, you can get an arc. That's... You... I did the math, McCall. I have 16. <laughs> yeah, you really should have been spending them a while back. You could have gotten some, you know... But, yeah, <laughs> retroactive... Um... Um, so... Uh, yeah. I will say that if you choose to spend save milestones, you can only do so once per scene. That's okay. Okay, good to know. Uh, then I am going to do... Uh, I'm going to take a momentum for an extra dice. Okay. And uh, I have Krav Maga. He's oh. going to go down. Uh, if you say so. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. I get an assimilation tubule in a neck. Yeah. That's my complication. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to spend threat to give him a dice. Uh, let's see. He wins. Oh. And he'll get to roll. How this many times is that? That's not many. Uh, you say that. That's not many dice because his security isn't too high. <laughs> That would be four, and you need to roll some uh, that has a knockdown effect, and I believe that is f fitness plus security. I I forget how knockdowns run. Uh, let's see. GM screen. Um. Uh, let's see. Knockdown is one more effect is rolled on the attack, then the target's not prone. You may resist the attack by adding a number of points to threat. So, if you wish to give me two threat, you can stay upright. Uh, uh, you know what? Sure. I think it'll be fun giving you two threat. Excellent. Okay. <clears throat> so, he he decks you, uh, deals you f uh, four points of stress, and you stagger back. But he does Rusik. not... Uh, he just... Uh, his face is contorted with um, anger. And a bit of impatience. Well, mostly anger at this stage. Rusik, stand down. Near to the bridge, send as many security personnel as you can. Uh, does he say Mobilizing. anything at least? You were taking too damn long. The more these inferior species that showed up, the greater threat would have posed to the interlink. We could have easily made, we could have easily overpowered them and got our crew to safety, but both you and her decided to talk instead. Well, and if I'm... you want to be seen as something besides the board, you stand down right now and you start opening a dialogue with these people. Maybe I'm. Well, I'm gonna have to maybe put I you don't. Down. Maybe I don't want that anymore. Because I have seen what. I have seen the. I have seen what the inter, what Verity and many of the Interlink wish to be. They wish to be pacifists. They wish to <clears throat> turn their back on the power that they 
were that had that 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 was forced upon them. And if they're if we were deemed to, and if the cosmic circumstances were as such that we were left behind where the others were taken, this is our throne to take, not walk away from. You keep talking like that, I'm going to put you down and you're not going to get back up. Stand down. Uh, Commander Dolrum, um, at this, while mm -hmm. this is going on in the transporter room, uh, several of the smaller uh, termite-class vessels um, begin to surround the Maw-class uh, ship. Um, several of the several of the lights begin to blink, and you see that you've spent enough time conversing with the Hive Lord that you realize that they communicate through pheromones, which is quite difficult for your ship to um, communicate communicate and decipher. But uh, whoever is on the bridge, keeping an eye on the situation, I'd like you to roll um, insight plus medicine, please. Ooh, that's not going to be great for me, but... Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of two. Uh, ship, of course, can assist with sensors plus medicine. And, oh yes, you have, you have the advanced sensor suite, don't you? So that's actually difficulty one. And I realize sure. now... I realize now I've actually forgot to apply that in previous tests. My bad. I'll just have to make everything harder to compensate. Oh, okay. we don't have to go that far. <laughs> Is that not how that works? Yeah, probably not. Anyways, uh, yeah, difficulty one. He already rolled it. He got a one. Oh, he <laughs> did get a one. Okay. Yep. Um, so latent security protocols hidden in the bowels of most Federation starships computer cores are especially post um Alpha Quadrant invasion from the Borg are programmed to alert when they detect a new occurrence of an assimilation. There's an assimilation in progress of the organic ship, the Maw. Uh, Commander Demos, we've got a problem. The system is noting an assimilation in progress, but I don't understand how. I'm guessing I'm being told that through the um, intercom? Oh, yeah. Alright, I'm just looking at Rusik, and I was like, stop it now, or I'll find a way to stop it. I made the... Uh, just as a sort of uh, middle finger gesture, uh, he raises one gauntlet, and the assimilation tubules quickly pop out, wiggle around a bit, and then pop back in. They weren't going to listen. They will now. I'm going to make one of them join the interlink so that they can see our pain. That's you what know better than the Borg. And I'm reaching behind and I'm pulling out my sniper rifle that materializes my hand and I'm aiming right at his chest. <laughs> uh, that gives you three threat, GM. Fantastic. Oh, Jesus. You're not supposed to give him more. <laughs> Last chance, Rusik. Stand down, or I take you down. He shrugs. At this point, it's too late. And he For takes you, a step forward. Yes. I'm firing. All right. Uh, roll me control oh, security. Uh, difficulty two, I believe. I will. Are you guys okay with me taking a momentum for a dice? Sure. Yeah. Well, that's the two you need. Roll me however ungodly amounts of challenge dice you need to roll. It's only nine with piercing. Oh, One. nine piercing. God. <laughs> okay, okay. Ow. It does take my miner to um, aim with it, so. Oh, 
it's uh, that's right. It's down there. Oh, yep. And that's only nine points of stress damage. Uh, three effects means that that wipes out all of his innate resistance. He, uh, on a ma the sniper rifle rever throughout the entire ship, even on the bridge and in the thrum of engineering, there is a the cacophony of this high-powered shot is heard as Rusik's metallic armor is nullified in a series of spark and flame. He takes one more step forward, his the lights go out on his uh, implants, and he falls forward like a mannequin being pushed over at a store. After the shot rings out, even though Neo's probably very much deafened at this point, yeah. being right next to that shot. Uh, he's running up to Verity and checking on her. All right. Uh, insight medicine for on you, please, Jaren. And this oh, is going boy. to be a difficulty of three because she is. Well, let's see. Yeah, she's either more human than Borg or more Borg than human, whichever way makes it harder for you as an engineer to figure out what's going on. Right. Um it's we're mo so I'm mobilizing up on the bridge. I'm mobilizing security teams down there. But I'm also starting to form crisis response teams cuz this isn't our only transporter bay, is it? Uh no, I believe you have two. I'm wanting to transport as many individuals off that ship. Um, as this I'll, is going down, deal with... I'll take a momentum for a third die. Okay. Uh, yeah. So let's run Nia okay. first, and okay. then we'll go through everything um, else. Yeah, none of my focuses would really apply here. Okay. Uh, yeah, no. The only thing would be, like, alien technology for Borg stuff, but that's a big stretch. Yeah, nope, that's not going to work for this one. Fair. Alright. Then we shall see what happens. Well, I got one. You got one. That's... Um, so there's... Uh, having been through a lot yourself today, you can certainly see the exhaustion in her eyes. Um, and there's several bru a lot of bruising around her cranial region that indicates some blunt force trauma, but that appears to be all that you're able to discern. Uh, she eventually st she eventually comes to her senses and stands up and looks over and she just shakes her head. That bastard. Almost too loudly, Nia's just like, what? Off the pad now, both of you. Uh -huh. She, Verity, takes a uncertain step, and then as soon as her, she figures out her implants again, her steps become more confident as she gets off the platform. Do you have a kill command for those nanites? I've never tried. I don't know yet. I need some... I need a quiet place. I need to think. I'm going over, and I'm going to step on the pad. And uh, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to spend some threat as the um, because as the beam materializes, she yells surprise, jumps on you so that she shares the beam and transports over with you. Oh boy! And we ha now have a mutant for Deimos mech. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure. For the most part, it doesn't work like that. Kill me. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay we will... So looking down at Reskin, he's like super dead, right? Considering that there's a giant hole in his stomach. Um, I mean, I I'd like to point out probably... that there's also a hole into the transporter wall and probably a couple bulkheads through. Yeah, probably. Oh, it's melted metal. Great. Uh, More repairs I'm going to have to do. Yeah, quite probably. Uh, so... 
it's uns I'm going to have to say maybe to Jaren because well rest or he uh, never really forsaken his or f he never really forsook his machine parts so it's possible that he's the organics are still alive mm -hmm. but that's about it um you don't know either way uh I'm dragging him off to med bay yeah just to be sure well you're met with a security team that is more than willing to help you out after ensuring that uh, his hands are fully covered in uh, industrial strength gauntlets to prevent him from doing anything should he actually decide to reboot himself. Sure. Oh, I will say that the sniper rifle was left behind. I didn't bring it with me. Fair enough. I think it only lasts the scene, right? Yeah, so it, yeah. even when we go to the ship there, I just figure, like, you know what, I'm just going to leave it behind on the ship for someone to tinker with. Fair enough. It's dead now. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, it did its job. <clears throat> okay, so Nia's going over there. Okay, so, uh, Commander Dalrum, what... So, the situation in space is getting a little more hectic um, because several of the smaller termite classes are actually beginning to... Oh, that's the wrong set piece are beginning to uh, spit some sort of uh, acidic solution onto the Maw ship. And the Maw ship is begin is writhing in agony at doing so. The two brick ships belonging to the Oshirix are moving in as well, dousing the area in very dense radiation. Great. And our deflector shields are the only things we have up right now because mm -hmm. transporters. Yes. Well, what I would like to, what I wanted to do was try to transport as many individuals off that Maw ship as we could mm -hmm. to wow. make sure as it's being assimilated and thinking that we can't necessarily stop it. Um, we should try to keep people from being in there as it's being assimilated because uh, mm -hmm. you don't want to be assimilated by proxy. Well, that makes perfect sense to me. Um, you could always... Uh, like, I'm sure one of the supporting characters is uh, down in sickbay who could provide you some insight into radiation sickness and that sort of thing. Yeah, we'll start... I'll tell sickbay to start inoculating for the increased gamma radiation as we're starting to beam understood and at which point the security teams who are cross trained in medicine or medical response begin to disperse the anti-radiation medicine among all the crew so <clears throat> Um, so I'm basically just going to start s saying how the situation begins playing out. Actually, nope, because Demos is on the other ship. So we should probably see what Demos is doing now. Um, has Demos actually told anyone he's gone over? I assume I... comms are open. Probably. So the bridge, yeah. so the bridge, you know, shouted out what was going on. Makes sense. And the security team's probably told someone. Okay, so we're going back to Theater of the Mind. Okay, so we are back here. At which point, Mr. Demos and Miss Verity are have beamed back into the same cavern that you had beamed them out of. And it is quite a sickening sight actually uh, seeing the healthy red uh, flesh and internal uh, flesh muscle and other internal structures uh, you can see the life uh, you can see the veins turning from red to gray to black 
as the nanoprobes begin to consume and replicate themselves uh, further into the bloodstream. Le behind them is left a ever darkening patch of lifeless flesh and small um, Borg implants begin to spontaneously pop um, through the skin. As the transport's completed, and I take in this sight, I'm looking at Verity, and it's like, are you responsible for this too? Or are you here to help? Just, she says, I'm here to help. Now shut up for a few seconds. And she produces nanoprobe, or nano, ah, nanotubulars of her own, jams them into a healthy portion of wall just before the black veins begin to um, protrude out there. I've never had to counteract something before. Just give me some time. These things replicate by eating the material that they're inhabiting, right? Yes. Can you redirect them? Attempting to. I'm trying to bring as many of them back into myself as I can. First of all, I have That's to... That's gonna cause you more harm than good, and you need to maintain this control on them, don't you? Congratulations, you know the Borg Collective. <sighs> He's gonna put his hand on the infected area. Yeah, they can nom on me for a bit. She raises an eyebrow. And she doesn't have time to argue. Nor do you, actually, as several of the warrior bugs begin to uh, charge in. And they see the two of you, and they begin to immediately open fire. Yeah, I'm standing in front of Verity. Fair enough. Um, so, let's see. Uh, the first one... Oh, critical failure. Okay. Oh, thank God. <laughs> uh, the first one is just so repulsed with what it's seeing, it drops its weapon and immediately runs. Uh, it would be your turn if you wish to do something other than absorb stress. Uh, I am going to just tap my com badge so the ship has an open line. Mm hmm. And I'm going to say, we're here to render aid and assistance. Do not fire. But I will protect myself if necessary. And, um... Yeah, that's, that's all I can do right now until we go through momentum. Okay. Well, um, you hear... They don't appear to be in the mood to listen at the moment. Uh, several of them begin to shriek war cries. Something of like machines, f loving machines. And I knew it was a bad idea. And oh god, I actually gave... And I gave him information on what came before. What have I done? As another one begins. Yeah. Ooh, that's oh, that's a critical success. Uh, what weapons did I give these guys? I think I just gave them Disruptor Rife. Oh no, I gave them a solid shot kind of thing, which I didn't spec out. Because I didn't actually think we'd do this. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> You'd think by now I'd learn, but I don't. Uh, you let's... weren't expecting me to shove my hand in an organic machine tonight. Yeah, no, that's... No, 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 no. Orcus. Expect, expect the unexpected with this group, McCall. By I now know. we should know... It's 10% preparation and 90% dealing with our changing shit. Yeah, I know. 10% preparation, 90% dealing with shenanigans. Do, 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 do. Shenanigans. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that is for piercing one. So that would be uh, four stress to you, Demos, negating two resistance if you have it. Oh, I have no resistance. Okay. Because <clears throat> resistance is futile. Uh, so that was another four to the four I had lost. So that mm -hmm. doesn't mean I take an injury? Um, I believe the injury only occurs if you take five at once. Okay. Yes. Five yeah. is the magic number. Okay. I have eight left, okay. gentlemen. <clears throat> um, Ver, um, at 
Verity says, you stupid idiot. Yeah, 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 I'm a wall. Just finish this up and get them to eat me. I'm working on it here. Commander, it'd be real appreciative if you could get him to stand down and stop shooting me before I have to shoot back. Hmm. Well, we'll try to take some of them out of the equation. Oh, and how are, how are you planning on doing that? Because I think I know how you're planning on doing that, but I want to hear you say it. Prepare the transporters, including the cargo bay transporters. That's what I thought. Okay, uh, ship can roll me. Uh, so whoever is taking on the role of transporter chief, which might be Keevan. Nope. Uh, roll me control plus engineering. Ship will assist with sensors engineering. Uh, you're attempting a mass transport, which increases difficulty by one, beaming from a non-pad to a pad. That's so one. That We're would be four. one. That would be four. However, you have advanced sensors, which decreases it by one. So difficulty okay. of three. And Could if you wish to... I... Yep. Assist with advisor? Not in this instance, I'm afraid. Actually, what I'll just do is I'll pop my determination for the um, extra automatic die roll. That works. What? what? You mean the yeah. auto two successes? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you only auto need one success. What value are you tapping? Oh, yeah. What What value? Sorry. Uh, Keevan, which value do you wish to uh, tap for your value? For your determination. Yep, that's, uh, that's going to be more than one solution to a problem. Sure. Works for me. Uh, ship is doing sensors plus... Engineering. Okay. And you have two momentum, and I have a cool advantage if you want to spend it. <laughs> so, Do it. <laughs> so with my auto roll, and... Yeah, I think we got it. Yeah, Thank we you. actually earned a moment. Yes, you have. You got one momentum back. And we just spent two momentum for your, whatever your advantage is, because I'm intrigued. Okay, so you're doing that. Uh, Demos, they're preparing to reload their rifles to fire at you again, when all of a sudden all three of them dematerialize, leaving their weapons just hovering in air for a split second before they clatter to the ground in a splooshy, in a splooshy sound. Uh, by the balls of Hephaestus and his forge, thank Christ. Okay, so we're going to cut back to space here. As the lunette, you are watching all this go down. The termites continue to uh, spray acid on the exter exterior parts of the Maw-class ship as it begins to go gray and green. Oh. Uh, you begin beaming out several of them, but there's about 200 life, or there's about 200 individuals inside. And you're not built for mass transportation. Um, no, no, we are no, not. You are not. Um, however, where is it? Here. However, the USS Black Shield is. It drops its holographic. Um, it drops its holographic uh, camouflage systems, and enters the system at. Uh, extreme range and begins to assist you with the mass transportation. Regardless of the fact that now several of the um, let's see the brick ship here and several of the small termite ships begin moving to intercept. You are now being hailed from the USS Black Shield. On screen. A um, large, uh... ah, the I really thought that's a Commander Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Uh, Commander Trull, known a um, a, Rige a species of Rigelian known as the Chelon, a turtleish uh, turtle, f the turtle species of Rigelian, typically known for their militaristic mindset. Um, Commander Dolrum. I apologize for our unexpected assist, uh, appearance. However, it appears that the situation has spiraled out of control and we could no longer remain in observation mode. 
we'll handle the formalities of informal introductions later. We need to get the situation under control. Understood. We are we are assisting with the transporters. Uh, Greatly see. appreciated. We've we're putting both of our transporter pads and everything we have in our cargo holds to transport, but we are not equipped for mass transportation. You are, our, sh our ship was once configured for uh, covert insertion and extraction. We are, we have transporters calibrated for just such an occasion. Well, we're just going to have to test that functionality out now, aren't we? We already are. And as you're uh, Keevan, your life signs on that ship are diminishing very quickly. For each uh, group of ten individuals that the lunette are pulling out, uh, Commander Truel is pulling out about twenty-five. Uh, Commander, we've got... <laughs> they're seriously, like, doubling over what we're pulling, so, yeah, this is good. Well, it's good until we start getting fired upon because we're taking people off the ship. Yeah. Mm. It does not so, bode well for uh, uh, being able to talk our way out of getting the inner link through their space. So about that, the uh, USS Lunette, that would be you guys, of course. Mm -hmm. The, Ox the Oxirish have finally decided that they're no longer going to be passive observers in all of this. I'm going to spend some threats to increase their hostility level. Oh, you nuts. Were, you were just so generous in giving me some. I, it would be a waste to send it. Or to, you're, welcome. So, you're welcome. I'm also bad for the Hope game, too, for giving threat away. I'm okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> bad. Bad as shiz. Spice of life. Get the spray bottle. <laughs> hey, you guys <laughs> left Igni to die. This is his revenge. Uh -huh. um, Play stupid wrong game, universe. Win stupid prizes. <laughs> uh, um, I don't think I gave them the right attributes for the macros, which is silly for me. So I shall just have to roll for them. Well, um, so. Or Congratulations. Um, one of their... So that's a critical failure. Uh, so this ship here, the large brick ship, attempts to use some form of plasma cutter on the USS Lunette. However, due to the chaos and everything going around, communication breakdown is occurring, and it accidentally cuts one of the termite ships, drawing a, uh, a space blood... Uh, a geyser of blood enters space and it immediately crystallizes and floats into space. We really should be telling them what's going on. <laughs> yeah, you probably should, but, you know. Um, okay, at this point... So Verity needs basically one more round of quote-unquote combat to try and stabilize the situation. Uh, thankfully, there are no more threatening life signs coming to assist or coming to hinder her process so it's just going to be stuff going on outside um uh, can i do something yes what would you like to do uh let's see i am going to do i'm going to do spark of creation i'm okay. going to try and uh, generate us some momentum okay so i roll five challenge dice all right and for every result, uh, do, uh, yeah, so any result that's one, it's momentum. Any, um, the little uh, combat symbol, mm -hmm. that Effect. is a threat. Okay. So let's see what happens. So oh. that is two threats <laughs> and two threat. no momentum. Nothing for me. Yep. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, also, my complication range increases by two. For the rest of the scene? Yep. <laughs> cool. Until the end of the scene. Okay. That's fine by me. <clears throat> so, um, USS Lunette, it would technically be your turn to do something in combat, if you wish. I'm going to assume that the transporting will continue in between turns. 
already. Um, with that under control, I'm going to try to hail, send a, well, it's not necessarily a hail, just a general call out saying that um, a rogue, how do I want to say? A rogue factor in the situation uh, has intervened in the peace talks. Uh, we are trying to rectify the situation by getting all citizens out of harm way, harm's way. Okay. Um, roll me a presence plus command. This is going to be a difficulty of three. Uh, composure? Given the given what's going on outside, yes, I will allow composure to occur. Okay, I'm going to spend this measly momentum for a third time. Okay. <laughs> you sure you don't want to give me more threat? Well, I if it's if I really want to, I have 16 mo milestones I can use as determination. <laughs> Difficulty three with a focus. I'll take it. All right. Three six. Nice. Six, That's what you needed. That is what you needed. Congratulations. The two. So what happens now? One of these ships, the yeah, the brick ships, and by this point I'm just going to call them what I actually call them, which I believe is the Benediction class. Nope, the Benefication class is what I call them. The Benefication class ships. Um, I'll say B class. B class, that works too. B class cruisers. <laughs> one, one moves out, the other one moves in, into placing it between itself and the black shield. It will engage tractor beam and basically fling the small termite class that's in its way out and begin attacking the maw class's infected bit with its cutting beam. <clears throat> Demos, um, I need... How do I want to play this? Roll me fitness plus security, please. And for funsies, this is the one time that I will not tell you the D one of, one of the very rare times that I will not tell you the difficulty class or the, the, the dif what difficulty you have to succeed. Okay. Just because tension. Um, I'm gonna give you a threat for a third dice. Okay. <laughs> uh, any focuses? Um, if you have anything like acrobatics or zero G combat or extra spatial mm, nope. stuff like that, no, okay. Well, that's four successes. Nice. Do we get any momentum? You would get one momentum from that. Yay! Verity does not succeed though. Okay. So, um, a large cutting beam. Uh, surgically slices through the the skin wall that you and a Verity are attached to, exposing you to the sudden depressurization of the vacuum. Um, you manage to grab a hold of one of those protruding nodes and manage to hold on. Verity, on the other hand, does not... And is I'm sucked going in. to grab her. Okay. Uh, roll me a... Roll me one more fitness security test, please. Uh, difficulty taking, of two. Taking that momentum, guys. <laughs> easy come, two easy go. Dog. We can't lose our uh, interlink ambassador. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yep, you get that one momentum nice. right back. <laughs> Yay! <clears throat> you grab her hand, and it tightens around yours. You, <clears throat> and the whatever ambience sounds there were quickly diminished to silence. 
Thankfully, because she is as artif she is quite artificial, she doesn't need to serve she is not ah. Suffocation is not one of the high threats uh to her right now. Uh part I... Yep, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, with that little interlink I have with her, mm-hmm. uh, I'm just saying, like, get them in me now, all the nanites, now, 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 and I'm starting to crystallize over. <laughs> I can't breathe in space. Really? I cannot. Oh, okay. That is, he, exos are designed to be as human as possible, so they need to breathe. Well, this is going to be an interesting thing for you then. Okay. <laughs> mm. Uh, the one, one of the last things you see as you begin to go unconscious uh, is she uh, wraps her arms around you and your uh, what's the uh, your internal your structural integrity sensors register a bit of a um, oh god I'm going to say it I'm sorry a bit of a penetration <laughs> uh, around your spinal cord and you fall unconscious. Outside, uh, the lunette, uh, the USS Black Shield and Commander Truel reports that evacuation is complete. They have 100 um, rather confused, disheveled, and slightly angry uh, Travaz um, uh, refugees on board. Uh, rather than trying to deal with them, he's just immediately beaming them to a nearby um, li- life ship. Fair enough. Um, the ben- the B class uh, completes its um, surgical di- um, amputation of the infected area, and the one of the maw uh, tendrils and the stomach lining that it was attached to um, fall op- fall away as the as, as the termites begin to uh, continue to dissect or continue to dissolve it with uh, bursts of a highly corrosive, toxic substance. Uh, if anyone's yeah. at the bridge, you guys just hear a, a knocking sound at a turbo lift door. Uh, I just wheel around. It would be Come Midas. In? I'm, guessing it's, in? I'm guessing it's Midas. Yeah, he's he's panicking. <laughs> Midas pops through, um, rather agitated. Midas, Midas are you okay. <laughs> save him, save him. No, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. Please oh. go ahead. This is your scene. <laughs> yeah, uh, Demos, uh, save me. He, he, help, Demos, 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 help him. And he's like just crashing himself into a console. Lock onto D- Demos and Verity's communicators and try to transport out. Okay, uh, you know the you know the rules by now. This would be a uh, difficulty of th- difficulty of two. Uh, control engineering, sensors engineering test. Sensors engineering. Uh, I'll have Nia do the control engineering here. Do you, you want to do that or do you want to keep on? Uh. Neo's control engineering is a sixteen. So yeah, let yeah let Neo do it. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. the lunette it ain't helping anything. Take the momentum. Um, Take the I momentum. Know. Would uh, is the difficulty two without advanced sensor suites or with? Uh, that is with the advanced sensor suites. Okie doke. I don't have a focus, so. We really need to get transporter focuses. Or, you know, a dedicated transporter chief. You know. Both are valid options. They are indeed. Anyways, that's the two successes you need. There is a... Uh, whoever... So, Nia, you're operating the transporter from pad one, where you've been dealing with the Travaz. And all of a sudden, a, fro- a frozen statue... Um, and that is being embraced by a also frozen Borg female. Materialize on the transporter at an odd angle. Hover in as physics decides whether or not it wants to take over. 
physics decides, yeah, we should probably let this one follow the laws, and the pair collapse in... How heavy are you, Demos? He is 400-some-odd pounds. Yeah, that's enough to break one of the transporter pads. Yeah, shattering the... There's a crash and a splinter as one the transporter pad decides to buckle under the weight of a falling exo. The Verity is the first to come out of it as she was, well, still conscious during the whole thing. Uh, Nia, you notice that she has, as she stands up, she's removing a simulation tubules from Demos. In a Instinctually, he just kind of reaches for his phaser. Um, no, no, no. It, it's it's not like that. It's not like that at all. He... I, I repaired him. Okay. He took damage um, protecting since... me. Um, if you... Wouldn't mind stepping off the transporter pad, Verity? Yes, yes, that that makes some sense, and she'll transport back where a pair of security officers are keeping her separated from the angsty Travaz. Yeah, um, for safety's sake, because he doesn't really know how the interlaying tubules work, uh, he's putting up a force field around the transporter pad. That seems logical. Yeah. Uh, Demos, in uh, it takes about five minutes for your your internal temperature sensors to register that it is, you know, safe. Livable. Um, however, do you dis- are you able to wake up? Regain At consciousness. At this time, no. Okay. No. Demos remains lifeless on the transporter pad. Hmm. Mobilize medical teams. Or yeah. engineering teams. Or no, yeah. Or Fair. yes. <laughs> Which one should we mobilize? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, we have a broken transporter pad and a broken exo. We kind of need teams. Yes. That sounds like a Keevan thing. Yep, it definitely does. Okay. Keevan, you wander in... or Not wander, that doesn't strike me as urgent. Enough. You rush in. Yes, I rush in. Okay. And where are your character sheets. There they are. There you are, Keevan. I'm assuming I'm going to assume that Midas is in tow. Oh, yes. He's bouncing off the force field. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. As is Keevan. Keevan attempts to assist and runs right into a force field. I'll drop it. Okay. Um, so, roll... Roll me, I guess, roll me Insight Engineering. Um, because you've spent a lot of time with him, I will say that his systems aren't a complete mystery to you anymore. So it's only going to be difficulty of two. Okay. And Midas will help. Yep, Midas will help, because that's what Midas does. Insight Engineering? Insight Engineering. Nice. Okay, that's two from him. What about Midas? One from Midas. So that's one momentum. What? So at this point, Demos, because you know your character far better than me, I'm not going to assume what the heck's going on with you. Oh. Uh, apologies in advance, Kivon. As you're examining Demos, um, and you're going over, and Midas is helping with you, um, Demos is immediately going to grab you by the collar, and he's just going to sit up and look at you as like, get off this ship now. We need to prepare for containment failure. Give us this, this is me. Look around. Oh, sorry. 
Sorry, I thought we were somewhere else for a moment. <sighs> it's okay. Um... He's, just, he's gonna look at his like right hand. He's watching it twitch out, and the lights are turning green. He's like, uh "Oh." So, um, here's the interesting part, Demos. So, your extremities, so your hands, are basically now Borg nanites. So, your hands are green. However, the rest of you, including scars you have accumulated on past um, excursions, uh, are pretty much healed. Um, You are as shiny as the day your body rolled off the assembly line. Okay. Um, you hey, have yeah, you have no stress, I should say. That's been yeah. removed. Okay. Hey, Kivon. Yes, Demos. Resistance is futile. You can't be serious right now. I don't know what I am right now. Verity. Okay. Sir. It was a quick job. I couldn't stop the full infection, but I was able to ensure that it was contained in the cauterized area of the ship. I had to shunt some excess nanoprobes somewhere. And, well, I took as much on as I could, and he volunteered for the rest. I don't think I was going to die. Well, you didn't. Did I call myself Dean with a Borg now? Another title? Whatever you need, uh, whatever you want to call yourself. I need a recharge. I don't suppose your sick bay or engineering warp core can simulate a regeneration alcove? No, but I we will... are close to one. Oh, yes, right. Uh, Okay. Just, I'm going to go to the brig and just get checked over by everyone before I go back to the bridge. I don't need to accidentally absorb Dolorim into my own mini-collective. <laughs> Midas all of a sudden just jumps around just saying, one of us, one of us, one of us. I'm just going to grab Midas and just hold him in a little hug. He's like, come on, buddy. <laughs> Your fingers tickle. Well... Uh... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So, Commander Dalrum, outside the situation appears tense, to say the least, but no one is actively shooting anyone anymore. But dang nation, it came close. If I had one more threat, I could have started a firefight. Oh, well. I'm happy I didn't give you threat. <laughs> oh, well. Is what it is. Okay, let's go back out to the beacon. However, with the appearance of the Black Shield, within a half hour or so, the Elune reappear, as that's who they were following. It's oh, a... I have so much explaining to do. <laughs> Yes, we do. There is a... You're basically pulled into a multi-way conversation right now. The Hive Lord, uh, the Commander Navrash. Let's see. Let's just get tokens on the field so I know who people are talking to here. We have the Oxyrus. Um, whoop, that's not it. We have Truel. We have Commander Nevrash, which is here. We have the Hive Lord. She's Jazz. And I think that's every one. And of course you. But, so, Commander Dolrum, 
Welcome to Diplomacy. Could I request an open line from the brig, just to listen in? Well, that's up to the commander, of course. Oh, I... On At this moment, I'm just going, on screen, we can funnel it down. Okay. So, <clears throat> I don't have it in me to voice four characters bickering and arguing with one another. So, um, Mr. Daldrum, what do you wish to say about the situation? As soon as I'm on screen and I hear all the... All right, let's get this over with. Hello, everybody. They all stop talking and look at you. I just wave in the view screen. Seeing as we have a lot of things to talk about. Why don't... Do we want to do this over the comms or do we want to do it in person? Commander Truel is the first to suggest an in-person meeting would go well. Uh, the Ox the Oxirish um, suggests that it would be in everyone's best interest if an or everyone else's best interest if he attended via telepresence instead. You know, given okay, the fact he's gamma radiation. Yeah, pretty much. But the others that, certainly agree. That is completely understandable and doable. Um, talking to the Oxirish. May I suggest we use the lunette? We have a conference room that we could easily seat everyone here. Well, it might not be uh, comfortable, but I don't actually have a set piece for it. So we'll just say yes. You do have a conference room. It's a bit tight. Probably more of a stri stri ah, strategy room, given what it was, but yes. Okay. If it, I imagine it's like Voyager's conference room, small with a like yeah. teardrop table. Yeah, I believe uh, Seven of Nine once called it an efficient design. But for the sake of which, we will just call... I don't even have a captain's room for this. All right, add that to the list of things to add for set pieces. We'll just have this on the bridge, but not the bridge. Okay. <laughs> Put those there. Put those tokens. Of course, I didn't copy them. Anyways, uh, please start the scene. Who else wishes to attend? I assume, well, Troll will be there. Mm -hmm. um, is any of our team here? Demos through intercom. <laughs> and I'll if be there. Allow. Demos can have a screen, have a part of the screen too. Okay. Should Verity be there? She would volunteer if asked. I mean, she is kind of the ambassador for the interlink. Or I can speak on her behalf, whichever. I mean, yeah. You have gained enough goodwill with both the Aloon and the uh, Travaz that they would accept her presence. All right. Well, since they're the ones in person, we'll have her there. Okay. Nia's just going to be kind of like listening slash watching from the bridge. Right. The whole acting Chief, like you're Chief busy. Petty Officer, you are in charge of the bridge. <laughs> Lieutenant Dusk raises a hand. Oh, uh, I will... sir. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> just for funsies, Nia's going to sit in the big chair, though. <laughs> oh, when I see that, I'm like, that's still my chair. <laughs> You'll get it back. Uh, you just see me like motion to out. Oh, I get why that's like that. Okay. Huh. The chair. <laughs> okay. Uh, Verity, that's who I'm missing. Anyways, uh, in order to prevent this from just being GM talking to himself five ways to Sunday, <laughs> um, I guess D yeah, Demos is there too. Um, which, so. The salient points of the conversation are Verity is the first to say 
that if it wasn't for the if it wasn't for their remnants standoffish manner all of this would have been resolved peacefully days ago yeah well we'll communicate that mm-hmm. are we each taking a person no i'm not worrying about that um let's just uh do me a favor dolrum um yes roll me three presence command tests um you have no momentum to roll against any let's say each one is going to be difficulty of hmm, difficulty two for each and if you get for each uh, sorry composure for a focus for each that would work although i would strongly suggest one of the arc milestones you might look into getting diplomacy because you've done so much of it recently yeah i was just saying that during our break i'm like i really need to just add diplomacy as a focus (laughs) yeah um yeah so that would be my recommendation so if you get momentum from the first roll, you can add it to the second etc etc fair enough Mm mm-hmm Okay, so that's... Yep, so you succeed the first one. Not the second one. Not for the second one. And not Not for the the third third one. one. Okay. You you could use your milestone to re-roll one of those. Yeah, this is technically a new scene, so... Sure. <laughs> Since I have sixteen to use. Yeah. 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 yeah you daddy warbucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can re-roll one of them, or just say one of them gets yet. Yeah. Okay. We will re-roll. Okay. Well, two successes, one. Two successes, half. one failure, which is <laughs> enough. So. The situation plays out as follows. Over the course of several hours, several failed attempts, and a couple, you know, things you've only seen done in diplomatic, uh, you know, some of those diplomatic um, orientation videos that say do not do this. Mm -hmm. We're doing them. Yeah, you decide to do them. And some, some of them actually work. Plus... Um, with your previous interactions with the Aelun and the Hive Lord, this session has granted you enough goodwill that they are that the Remnant Alliance is w- willing to allow you the this fleet only of Interlink to pass through. They will not allow any further to pass through, given that this is going to be a, already a political um, faux pas. Yeah putting it mildly and any other interlink should be encouraged to find alternative uh, entrances to this transwarp hub alternatively or second of all um, actually no you needed three to achieve that success you didn't get that so we're not going to that milestone just yet Uh, also um, you will be granted um, safe passage through uh, remnant space, so long as, and they glare ext- at uh, Commander Truel for this, so long as they announce their pre- your presence at the borders and your destination and your purpose for entering the space. That can be, that is, those are agreeable terms. Hopefully, this is the start of a alliance of some sort. We will see, Commander. And one by one, they disperse back to their ships, leaving uh, you, Verity, Verity, and Truel, and Demos over comms. I just look at Truel. I appreciate you for coming, but why were you tailing us? Orders. Was Better it? question. Why did you destroy those two ships that caused a whole shitstorm? It was not our intention. We at we ah we noticed that there were drones. 
no life signs on board and communicating with high frequency. We attempted to intercept jam and otherwise cut off their communication so that they could no longer be a threat. Standard Starfleet intelligence tactics is to us is to determine strengths and weaknesses of any potential opposing party. It appears that once then he sighs it appears if they receive no communication within a certain period of time, they believe themselves to be compromised by opposing forces and self-destruct. Good to know for future reference. Indeed. I regret that it came t I regret that we were unable to foresee such a failsafe. Well, it's also they seem like they're extremely technologically advanced. To use drones the way that they do. Yes. yes. It is... Did you intercept any of those transmissions? Of course. I want a copy. Nope. All intelligence gained is property of Starfleet intelligence until proven otherwise. Well, I'm part of Starfleet. Yes, but you're not part of Starfleet Intelligence. Take it up with That's your right. commanding officers. It's also I'm... a good doctor. They could also use some intelligence. You may... Any complaints you wish to file against me or my crew or Starfleet Intelligence may be taken up with your station captain. I mean, I'm acting captain. Does that mean I get to make that choice? If you wish. If you have a complaint, feel free to take it up the command chain. I do not answer to you. I uh, I already face possible. I already face a pos. I already face negative consequences for aiding you in in the evacuation of the Travaz. Yeah, I appreciate it. If you need anybody to go to bat for you, don't be afraid to throw my name. If you get reassigned. You always have a spot at Deep Space 15. Understandable. With that, Captain. Or with that, Commander. He taps the comm badge. Number one, beam me out. And with that, he teleports away. <sighs> I stand up from my spot uh, in the conference room, look to Verity. Let's say we get home. Commander Dolrum, that is the nicest thing. And then she le looks at uh, Demos's uh, image on the screen. Well, third nicest thing anyone said to me all day. I'll take it. What was the first? It was something about you. It was something about you protecting me and um, saving my life. I'm glad oh. I could repay the favor. Yeah. My hands feel weird and different. Well, I'd be more than happy to look at them when we're back at the station. Get a... See what this Transwarp hub has in the way of medical facilities. Speaking of, um... Transwarp hub... Commander... I want to clear with the captain, but I'm going to take the Apollo when necessary, go through the gate and try and find some of these interlock Borg. Since the Apollo is able to do QSD, might as well try and find another entrance point, and then relay that information out to them. That's true. Find something close to remnant space that is not in remnant space that is somewhat easily got uh, achievable. And I think Deacon would like to go on a little trip as well, check out her old empire. Very true. And once I'm cleared, I would like to get out of the brig. I like being on the other side of the fourth field. Yeah, it's never fun being on the other side. No, it's really not. Now I know why people get upset. <laughs> Just don't touch the flashy thing. It hurts. Uh, I will say just for a little bit of fun, mm -hmm. just the outer glow of Demos' eyes has a has a green tinge to them now. 
Normally they're blue, but now there's a bit of green mixed in. Oh boy. Out of curiosity, do you try touching the force field? Yeah, he will just give it a little tap with his boot. Mm. <laughs> there's a bit of a spark, but, you know, standard impact into force field kind of thing. Yeah, well, I'll be here. Well, this is going to be a hell of a report for the captain to read. Uh, and on that, I have run out of plot, so Lieutenant Dusk order. Lieutenant Dusk says, uh, this is probably the craziest wagon train I've ever led home. Yeah. I don't know that I could say that. Although usually, the last time we were crashed on the surface of a planetoid trying to survive the Borg. Just for our fun giggles. Uh, big old Gorn walks up to the bridge and looks at Kivon. That'd be Tuesday? Yep. And he's holding a pad in his hand. It's an oversized pad, too. Oh, yeah, industrial one. strength. <laughs> yeah, it's small compared to Tuesday's hands. <laughs> Chief Engineer. Yes, Tuesday. My report. And it just it just shows his maintenance work, and he's like, Jeffrey Tube 16, damage power relay, I fix. <laughs> End of report. Very, very short and very concise. I like it. Good. Tuesday. Yes. Can you fix the hole of the transporters? What hole? <laughs> oh, Tuesday. I'll Wait until you get down there. Oh, very well. <laughs> You'll just turn around and trudge off down. <laughs> you just hear in the distance, what the... <laughs> <laughs> and scene. <laughs> uh, well, uh, thanks all for playing. Um, phrasing was definitely a thing. Oh, uh, absolutely. It seemed to be a necessary thing for this week, but I'm glad you enjoyed. Mm -hmm. So thank you, players. Thank you for watching. And we'll be back next week for the uh, crossover episode between Cerberus personnel and those from ELH's Dark Royal game, which is going to be interesting one way or the other. Bye-bye. It shall be a lot of fun. Bye.